Welcome to week five of Football Fridays in Georgia here on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Tonight, we're at historic Northcutt Stadium where the Blue Devils of Marietta will host the Hawks of Hillgrove in a big region rivalry. And calling all creative high school students, I'm Claire Sims. I'll let you know how you could win $2,500. I'm Matt Stewart. Coming up in our College Football Hall of Fame recruiting segment, we'll show you one of the top punters in the nation. He's committed to Auburn. And I'm Larry Smith. Also, our extra point segment coming up, the three keys to tonight's game, and who has the advantage. That's next. So it's the Hillgrove Hawks. It's the Blue Devils of Marietta. The All Access Pass pregame show is coming up next, live on GPB. <laughs> Hi again and welcome to the Football Fridays in Georgia's All Access Pass Free Game Show. Tonight, we're live in Marietta, Georgia at historic Northcutt Stadium, celebrating the 75th year of play on this gridiron where the Blue Devils of Marietta will host the Hillgrove Hawks in the game, matching up two explosive offensive teams. Good evening, everybody. I'm Claire Sims alongside Mark Harmon. And Marietta, they've had a program since 1902. Hillgrove, maybe they're just a little bit newer, but both programs are hoping to make a little history tonight. That's right. Should be a great day. Both teams like to light up the scoreboard. And, of course, uh, Marietta has that one state championship back in 1967. Hillgrove still looking for their first. All right. Grace Olson has been hearing from these awesome fans all week long. They have been sending us their videos spirit worth sharing. Let's check in with Grace now. Grace? Thank you. That's right. Football Fridays in Georgia is all about football and all about you. And with that said, me being the social media correspondent and a team of helpers we've got behind the scenes, we're bringing you all the action on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm going to be tweeting big plays, score updates, photos, all you can imagine. Also, all that's going to be coming to you on Facebook as well, so make sure to like us on Facebook. Now, we've got tons of cameras here tonight to bring you the best views possible of this game, but the videos you can take with your phone these days aren't too shabby. With that said, we have a contest going on. It's our spirit worth sharing contest. We want you to send us videos of showing us how you show your school spirit. This is the winner of this past week. This is the Hillgrove student section. They took this with a GoPro and sent it our way. So all we're asking for is 15 second videos showing us how you show your school spirit and the winners each week will be shown on Football Fridays in Georgia. So to make sure to get on that as soon as possible. And as I'm telling you about all these neat new things we're doing with social media. When this place was built, Northcutt Stadium, back in 1940, none of that was possible. Uh, one of the state's oldest actively operating stadiums is right here, and it's meant so much to generations by generations of Blue Devils fans. I had the pleasure of touring the stadium with two of those guys who have been there since the stadium's humble beginnings. Take a look. Take a step back in time to 1940s Marietta football. These Friday night heroes wowed fans at Northcutt Stadium, built at the time to be the finest venue in the state. And in that very same place, the Blue Devils pigskin game still remains. Every year we're briefed about the history in the stadium because we know that we're not just playing for this generation, but we're playing for every generation that came before us. In the locker room, we have pictures of people playing here from like 70 years ago. A bond issue in Marietta was passed in 1938 and one of the features of the bond program was to build a football stadium. Daddy wanted to be sure that we had the finest football stadium in Georgia. And back in those days, we didn't have big, powerful machines. We had a few steam shovels and things to move dirt, but most of the dirt was moved by uh, mules pulling a pan of dirt at a time. Northcutt Stadium looks pretty similar to other high school venues but this stadium's got features you could definitely say are signs of its time. We have grass right here. A lot of football fields, you have big tracks surrounding it. That's right. Now you see a fairly narrow uh, strip here, about a yard or so from the sideline. Sometimes the coaches don't think that's an obvious asset uh, because the uh, spectators down on the first row can uh, hear what the coach is saying to the boys. But the stadium's most signature feature you'll see it before you even step through the gate. So here the stone wall, this is probably the most historic part of Northcutt Stadium. I think so, yes. It's uh, brought a lot of happy memories back to the, to the boys that played ball inside this wall. 
and hopefully unhappy members to our opposing teams. These are native rocks, Cobb County, mostly picked up around farms. So it's kind of a representation of all of the surrounding area. That stone wall is a familiar sight to David Dosser, a former football player and graduate of Marietta's class of 1943. You can see there the old helmets. Oh yeah, that's right. People love football. And even then, they, they love football. And as I say, this was during the war years, and uh, they still came to the ball games, regardless what happened. Another sign of the times, head coaching spots were hard to fill, and that wasn't due to a lack of interest. It was very difficult to find coaches in those years because it was, it was in the middle of World War II. Times have certainly changed. Head coaching vacancies are filled in a flash. Stadiums built a little less cozy, and eccentric jumbotrons decorate end zones. But the charm of historic Northcutt Stadium and the memories created here are everlasting. Now Northcutt Stadium, right after the Blue Devils finish this season, this stadium's gonna go un undergo lots of renovations, but one thing that's not gonna be messed with is this wall right here, like you saw in the story. It's truly a representation of the community surrounding it, and it's gonna stay exactly intact and where it is. And also, I told you about those Spirit Wars sharing videos. The way you can share those is over Instagram, via Instagram, and via Twitter. And hey, if you wanna post them to our Facebook page, go at it. They need to, sorry, it's pretty windy out here tonight, but they need to be about 15 to 30, second long videos and just show us how you show your school spirit with the hashtag spirit we're sharing back over to you mark thank you grace it's going to be a great night for a football game here the two guys calling the game tonight matt stewart and larry smith they're ready to talk x's and o's a little chalk talk segment that we call extra point thanks mark larry it's time now to take a look at our three most important extra points in tonight's ball game we start with marietta running back Curvante Benson rushed for over 300 yards yeah. in their last game against South Cobb. Obviously, Hillgrove wants to try to stop it. Yeah, and Marietta, of course, wants to let him give all that he can get, and I think he will. I think you'd agree. We're going to give the edge to Curvante. All right. Establish the tempo. Hillgrove wants to establish the tempo on their offensive side with their two running backs, Sonny Harris and Eric Montgomery. Yeah, I, and I think that uh, they'll do a good job of that. You know, Coach says, hey, we're going to play these guys, run them in and out. I think they have the advantage on that. Yeah, over 500 yards rushing for those two together. And our last one, play fast, play physical. The team that's able to do that tonight is going to be the team that wins this game. Absolutely. And one thing you think about these two teams, Hillgrove, much more a veteran team. Marietta, a much younger team. Uh, what do you think? I think we'll go with Hillgrove. Marietta's got five starting sophomores on the defensive side of the ball. If they play fast and physical, Marietta's got a shot. But we're going to give the check to Hillgrove. Mark, back to you. All right, thanks so much, guys. One of the things that both teams are trying to hope for is that their teams stay healthy and their players stay healthy as well. And that's something that you and I always try to strive for uh, every single day as well. And one of the big issues that we've been hearing a lot about in recent years is concussions. And so joining me now is Dr. Robert Hamilton of Cigna. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. So what are the big things that people need to look for in their kids who maybe are very active? Well, only in the last few years we've seen increased awareness of concussion and the impact that that has. And people really need to take head injuries seriously, even if they don't lose consciousness. It used to be a situation where if you thought people were knocked out, oh, they have a concussion. Now we know that you can be concussed even without uh, a full loss of consciousness. So you have to be aware of that. And that's one of the big misconceptions, obviously. Are there any other big misconceptions? I know people think that only football players can get concussions. Right. No, any any kind of head injury, not just football players. And you have to be aware of other signs, including uh, headache that's persistent, nausea, vomiting, those kind of things, dizziness, uh, excessive sleepiness, unsteadiness on your feet, those kind of things. There are a lot of signs and symptoms that can happen just from a hard hit to the head, even when you think you're okay. And one of the big things to keep in mind for parents is just because maybe your child is taking headache medicine or something like that, that doesn't necessarily mean the concussion has completely healed. Not at all. You have to give it time. Unfortunately, there's no cure for it. You just have to give it time. And if you rush back too quickly, you're far more likely to have another concussion. And once you've had one, you're more likely to have more. So you have to give it time and allow it to heal. And I believe we have some video also of, of cognitive testing. That's one of the ways you can tell because it's really different for everyone, isn't it? It really is. And the athletic associations have done a great job of making sure that the criteria are very clear for coaches and parents and things to make sure that the child has recovered. All right. Dr. Robert Hamilton of Cigna for our signature moment. Thank you so much. Thank you.
All right, we're getting ready for this big game. Hillgrove and Marietta. John Nelson is standing by with the head coach of the Hawks, Philip Ironside. John? Thank you very much, Mark, here with the coach. And I guess let's talk about what you've learned after the, I guess we just passed the quarter poll. So what have you learned about your team so far? Uh, as people have asked, just very resilient. We've played a pretty tough schedule. Uh, we've been in every ball game and played very hard. Been down big, been up, been, you know, we're two and two right now, but I think we've got a good bunch of kids, very hard working, and respond to coaching. And at the same time, that's what coaches do these days. They set up that non-region schedule. It's almost three separate seasons now where you want that first season to set you up for the second season, which is now region play. It is, and, you know, I think Coquit County probably does the best job of that. They haven't won a region yet, and they played in about five straight semis. Uh, they turn it on at the right time of the year. Uh, for us, it was we had to find four ball games that made it difficult. And then you're coming off a good year, it's hard to find people. And North Cobb ran in the same thing. So did McEachern, and we all played some common opponents because of that. And uh, we were probably the one, us in Region 1, I think, were the largest looking for games. So it makes it difficult. All right, about 30 seconds left. One more question. Look at the, tonight's game for me. What do you see? Two very similar teams, uh, both trying to run the football and establish something. And, uh, young and replacing a lot of talent from last year's teams. Uh, should be pretty evenly matched, and these games usually go down to the very end. So, All right, well, thanks for your time. Good luck tonight. Thank you. All right, let's send it back over to Mark as the pregame show on the All-Access Pass continues. We're going to let Coach Ironside actually go do some coaching <laughs> stuff, Mark. All right, walk right in front of John, right in front of the camera. He's a busy man. That's right. On a mission. We're getting ready. We have a lot more All-Access Pass coming your way. Matt Stewart drops by to talk a little recruiting. Plus, I'm going to tell you more about our Stop the Drop video contest and how you could take home $2,500. We're talking to you, high schoolers. That and much more as Football Fridays and Georgia's All-Access Pass continues right here on GPB. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, go you. And viewers like you, thank you. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers, anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren. And I've got your back. Football Fridays in Georgia is live every Friday on GPB during football season, and you never know who you're going to run into. Sometimes it's a very famous comedian who thinks you might be a redneck. I've interviewed Jeff Foxworthy before, but this was one of those rare times when I got to interview him as a dad. His daughter was homecoming queen. I'm thrilled for her tonight. This is her night. And I also got to tell everyone what Jeff's middle name is. I cannot wait for this season of Football Fridays. Go online and let us know some of your favorite moments. Each week, GPB brings you the latest in high school sports. Hi again, everybody. But we want to hear what you have to say. Tell us what's going on with your team. Share your favorite moments. Post your own pictures and videos. And let everyone know why your team will go all the way. Just log on and like us on Facebook, where you can post comments, pictures, and videos to earn your own team bragging rights. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, too. Welcome back to the GPB All Access Pass pregame show as we get ready for kickoff between the Hillview Hawks and the Marietta Blue Devils. You know, Claire, there's going to be several players playing tonight that's going to play on Saturdays in the years to come, and that's always exciting. It is exciting to see them move on to the next level. Yeah, to talk more about that, we welcome in our play-by-play -play guy, Matt Stewart, on our football College Football Hall of Fame recruiting roundup. And you keep your thumb on the pulse of all this kind of stuff. Let's talk about Hillgrove first and Richard Hallman, the wide receiver. Yeah, Richard Hallman is a 24-7 Sports composite three-star wide receiver. He committed to the Georgia State Panthers on the 4th of July. 6'3", 175 senior. Here's some good video of him right here. Uh, not really considered a speedster at the next level, a speedster at this level for sure. Long and lanky steps and able to get downfield pretty good. He's got 10 catches for 158 yards so far this season and one touchdown. And again, he committed to uh, 
Georgia State, a couple of months ago, head coach uh, Philip Ironside said, you know, when they started uh, practice in the uh, fall, they didn't really know if they had a group of wide receivers. And here in week number five, Richard Hallman and those wide receivers for the Hillgrove Hawks are probably the strength of the team. Eric Montgomery is another guy who's going to be playing on Saturday. Yeah, he's a six foot, 200 pound uh, senior running back. He committed to the Georgia Southern Eagles this summer, and he's a good looking running back here. 36 carries for 255 yards, a stout seven yards per carry, three touchdowns, averaging just under 64 yards a game. He's part of that tandem with Sonny Harris, and both of them very quick. Uh, Harris probably quicker, and Eric is probably the faster, and they'll play them in a rotation to keep them fresh during this ball game. All right, the Marietta Blue Devils, the home school, they've got a kid who can kick the ball fantastically, both punting and kicking. Yeah, if you're a fan of the Auburn Tigers, you're going <laughs> to like this. You know, nobody really cares about the punter until you don't have a punter. So when you, when you don't have a punter, that's a big deal. Ian Shannon here uh, is rated the number two punter in the entire nation by the 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings. He's also their kicker and last year he was 16 of 18 on his field goals, and nine of those 16 field goals were for 40 to 49 yards. So he's got a strong leg, averages about 40 yards per kick, and 85% of his kicks were touchbacks last year. All right, real quick, one other kid, Cervante Benson, who's had a 300-yard game. Uh, broke Derek Tinsley's record uh, just uh, last week against South Cobb, and Derek Tinsley is now his position coach. He's rushed for over 600 yards, a guy a little bit off the recruiting radar, but the 100-meter state champion twice in his high school <laughs> career already. This guy's a burner. He's got offers from Georgia Tech, Duke, App State, and Wake Forest. So this is a guy that uh, you're, we're going to see at the next level and a guy that's probably going to get more offers as his senior season progresses. All right, thanks very much, Matt Stewart, on our College Football Hall of Fame recruiting roundup. He's here every week with all the recruiting news. Thanks a lot. Yep. We've been asking for you to share your spirit with us, and right now our Grace Olson is standing by with somebody who definitely has spirit worth sharing. Grace? That's right. I've definitely found that Twitter is a great avenue for athletes, former athletes of these programs, to keep up with their programs and, and cheer on their former teammates. Now, Marietta's former quarterback, Anthony Jennings, he now plays big time at LSU in this Marietta cheerleader, Georgia. She cheered for Anthony while he was still here. What's one thing that most people don't know about Anthony? Um, well, he's really goofy. He's always cracking jokes. So, Well, I've seen a lot from Anthony supporting these Blue Devils on Twitter, so that's awesome to see. Uh, now, um, let's sit him back over to Mark. All right, Grace, thanks very Sorry. much. And one of, one here at uh, Georgia Public Broadcasting is to raise awareness of the high dropout rate in Georgia high schools. Now, our state has one of the worst graduation rates in the entire nation. Only Washington, D.C. and two other states had lower rates of graduation in 2012. Yeah, that's not good news. But what is good news is there's a program in Fulton County that is trying to change that. It's called Future Foundation, and it's taking some of the most at-risk kids and making them some of the most successful. <laughs> Step by step, students here at the Future Foundation's Teen Center in College Park are making all the right moves toward graduation. Savannah Wilkerson is a junior at Hapefield Charter High School. From dance classes to volunteer activities, she says the foundation feels more like a family. They really help us. Like anytime we're having trouble, it's not just like an academic thing. They help us personally and anything that we need help in. Savannah is just one of the 160 students the program helps each year. I'm Cornelius Harper. Cornelius Harper is another. He started at the program six years ago. Now he has a college degree and is back as a case manager teaching students in the College for Careers program. There's so much influence to keep them away from school. I can relate to them because I'm from your area. I probably lived on the same streets you lived on. So that's where I definitely can be the most help. Like, hey, I've been here. I've lived here all my life. If I can make it, definitely you can too. Kadira Abdurrahim is the foundation CEO. She says students in South Fulton County are often struggling with more than just math or science homework. We service so many kids that don't have access to food sometimes, that can't even, that don't even have backpacks and school supplies. We really do still have poverty stricken kids here and they need our support. And Harper says those extra stumbling blocks make it easier for kids to just give up. We're there to help them, to catch them, so they don't get trapped and not graduate, uh, get trapped and dropping out, or get trapped in anything going on in the streets. 
Here at the Future Foundation, students like Wilkerson can find their rhythm. I started in the fifth grade and I felt like school, it wasn't really important, but the people at the Repos, they really helped me a lot to where I'm now an AP and all honor student and I've had AB on the roll every year. And she's not alone. Every student enrolled in the teen program since its start in 2007 has earned a high school diploma. Future Foundation has been helping children in our community for more than 10 years now, and it continues to grow. They just opened a brand new chapter at Banneker High School. For more information on the Future Foundation, you can visit them at futurefoundation.org. And we want you to help us tackle the issue of kids dropping out of high school. We have a great contest going on this year called the Stop the Drop Video Contest, and here is how you can enter. Make a 30-second PSA, and it's going to tackle the issue of why students in your community specifically are dropping out and what everybody around those students can do to help them stay in school instead. Then what's going to happen is later in the season we're going to pick our favorites and those will go online for people to vote on. And then the winners, they are going to get to watch their PSAs right here on GPB. The first place winner is going to take home the grand prize of $2,500. Second place is going to score a check for $500. For all the contest information, you can visit us at gpb.org slash stop the drop. Time now to send it over to John Nelson and to Rachel Freeman for a very special presentation. John, take it away. Thank you very much, Mark. It is that time when we catch up with Rachel Freeman, the marketing director of the Mid-South region for Cigna, and with Lee Colburn, the principal of Marietta High School, for a very special presentation. Hey, thanks, John. I'm delighted to be here today to present a check for $1,000 to Marietta High School. All right. The, the, the alum, congratulations. Thanks for being a great host. Well, thank you, and thank you, Cigna, for being here. Thank you, Georgia Public Television. We're working forward to a great game. All right, let's mark. It's a special presentation. Let's send it back to you. John, thanks so much. Coming up on the All Access Pass, John will be back. It's time for John's George, and he's got a segment about a top-ranked team that barely held on and won last week. Plus, we are going to have Mark, this guy right here, he's going to talk to Marietta's head coach as we count down to kickoff on Football Fridays in Georgia's All Access Pass right here on GPB. Georgia cotton farmers want you to know cotton is grown in 91 Georgia counties on over 1 million acres. Cotton makes a $2.5 billion economic impact and accounts for over 15,000 jobs in Georgia. Cotton's innovative production has lowered water use per pound of cotton by 75% since 1980. One bale of cotton can make 215 pairs of denim jeans or 700 towels. Cotton is a natural choice for Joe. Joe gets up at 7 a.m., washes his face, gets dressed, grabs breakfast to go. He then patiently waits for the bus. Chats up his classmates, goes to school, doesn't go in. Great act, Joe, but you're only fooling yourself. This is 88.5 FM, Atlanta's new source for your news and information. Good morning. Let's start the conversation. What's on your mind, Atlanta? We want to hear from you. The news and information you've been looking for is here on 88.5. From Peachtree City to Piedmont Park, from Norcross to Decatur, GPB Atlanta is the source for stories from your community. All news, all information, all day. Next time on Finding Your Roots, Derek Jeter, Billie Jean King, and Rebecca Lobo get into the game of genealogy. That's unbelievable. I don't know how many generations I've been here. Wow. Finding Your Roots. Tuesday at 9 on GPB.
The national anthem just ended here at historic Northcutt Stadium in Marietta. Welcome back to GPB's All Access Pass. Northcutt Stadium is a great place for high school football. They won the state championship in 1967. They've won over 550 games, so it's quite a historic place. Pretty good record. All right, talking about historic places, we turn over to John Nelson, the author of four books, two on high school football in the great state of Georgia, a segment we call John's Georgia, presented by Georgia's EMC. Topic number one, we've got a top-ranked team that barely squeaked by with a win last week. And for that, we'll spend some time in central Georgia, Oconee and Tri-County EMCs for a look at Stratford and Aquinas. It was a back and forth game all night long. You want to talk early on, Osho and Williams have for 131 yards rushing, made it 14-7. There's Nash Bennett's touchdown right there for Aquinas' only points on the board, and there's the Williams touchdown right there. You want Stratford, they were hanging on for most of the game, but when you have a PAT, you've got to make it, and that was the margin in the game. Stratford loses to Aquinas, 28-27. Reuben Garnett with the touchdown late. Mark, that's topic number one. What's topic number two? Topic number two is two top-ranked teams colliding, and who came out on top? It was a single-A battle, and it was in Columbus, and for that, we'll spend some time in Okmulgee and Diverse Power EMCs for a look at Brookstone as they were host to Hawkinsville. Tyron Davis ends up with the interception right here early on, and really it was all Hawkinsville. Warren Singletary ends up with the touchdown off of this drive. They ended up with a point block uh, with a punt block. Reginald McDonald had a touchdown as well. Hawkinsville rolls 33 to 7 at Brookstone Mark, and that is topic number two. What is topic number three? Topic number three, Region 16A is the toughest in the land, but Region 1AA is pretty darn tough too. Yeah, well, let's go off of what happened last week. Let's spend some time in Mitchell EMC for this one. We talked about 1AA last week in backroads and backfield, so we consulted our South Georgia expert Mark Dykes to talk about the central focus in Region 1AA. They lost two great players, Malcolm Parrish, all-world player, and Derek Herring, who are gone. But they have reloaded. I think they're going to fly under some people's radar because of losing such high-quality players. But Coach Freeman has those guys ready to play. Once again, I think, I think you have to look to them, and I think Thomasville is going to be very good this year as well. So, Mark, Mark talking about – Brooks County, and obviously a lot of folks like to see what's going on in equipment, and you know that that is topic number three, so that means that John's Georgia está kaput. Brought to you by? Georgia's EMC. All right, John, thanks very much. We'll see you at halftime. Now let's check in with uh, Coach Scott Burton. I talked to him just moments ago about this big game. Just excited. You know, Hillgrove presents a ton of challenges for us. It's a great program, and you know, we got to play really well to be on their level tonight. Historic Northcutt Stadium, 75 yeah. years. It's Hall of Fame night. Talk about what that means to your players and to this program. You know, this community is so special, and this city is just it wraps its wraps its arms around our program, and uh, our, our players know it. They recognize that there's so many traditions that are alive here. That if you're not uh, if you're not a Blue Devil, you may not know about those traditions. But uh, our kids certainly do, and they they really thrive on the, the tradition and the history. And uh, they also know that that any given night we got 5,000 people behind us that are just you know, living and dying through us each each Friday, and our kids embrace that opportunity. Talk a little bit about your running back, Cervante Benson. He had 320 yards in one game. He did. He did. You know, he, Cervante is a great kid, and, you know, he's such a competitor. Uh, he's not the biggest kid, uh, but his competitive nature is, is among the best I've ever been around. And, he, you know, he, he gives it up to the offensive line whenever he can, and, and our defense played really well to give us those opportunities. And, and so Cervante is looking for another big night tonight, but it's going to be tough because Hillgrove is awful difficult. Is this going to be a great atmosphere here with Hall of Fame night? Two great game, two great teams. It's going to be a region matchup, so everything's in, on the table tonight. Everything's on the table. I mean, you know, our, our players are young, they're inexperienced, but you know, we're trying to get them to understand that as region play opens, that they've got to step their game up. And, and really, you know, what better night with Hall of Fame and, and back home here at Northcutt and, and everything surrounding it, GPB being here, it should be a great night. Coach, thanks very much and good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Coach says this Hall of Fame night, very, very special. The people coming back and who has owned players this year. Yep, and Grace Olson has been checking in with fans all week long. Let's check in with her for one last social media update. Grace? That's right. Thank you. Back here with Blue Devils cheerleader Georgia. Georgia, every time we cover Marietta, your brother is tweeting us like crazy. And I know your family history here at Marietta goes way back. Yeah, um, my brother's actually the fifth generation to graduate from Marietta High School. So our family roots are really planted here. So this place is all about the history. Now I'm going to let you do the honors. Hold up the uh, iPad we got here. This is the special, the famous GPB football app. You need to download it because look what everything we've got here. We've got news. We've got all the games going on tonight around the state. Here, if you click teams, all the teams load, you can find out anything you need to know about your favorite Georgia high school football team. Back over to you guys on the set. 
All right, thanks so much, Grace. It is finally that time we are counting down to kickoff. It is the Hawks of Hill Grove. It's the Blue Devils of Marietta. It is game time on Football Fridays in Georgia, live, live on, on GPB. GPB. On this date in history, September 26th, 1865, Famous Georgian Archibald Willingham de Graffenreed Clarendon Butt was born in Augusta. Who, you may ask, was Archie Butt? Well, he was a journalist who became a U.S. Army officer who became a military aide to two, count them, two U.S. presidents, first Teddy Roosevelt and then William Howard Taft. Alas, a political feud erupted between Roosevelt and Taft in 1912, and that put Archie Butt in a tight spot. President Taft encouraged him to go abroad for vacation and then take a slow boat home to enjoy the sea air. Sadly, the boat Archie Butt chose for his return was named the Titanic. When you think about it, Archie Butt was a casualty of political war. From Roosevelt and Taft to Hillgrove and Marietta, and a very different kind of feud. The Hillgrove Hawks went 11-2 last season under the leadership of Philip Ironside, the only coach this team has ever known. But Coach Ironside's quarterback son, Elijah, graduated last year, so this is a transition year. The Marietta Blue Devils have 74 years of history here at Northcutt, but it's due for a major overhaul. This team would like to see their beloved stadium and this season go out in style. With a strong 8-3 showing last year, Coach Scott Burton's team has a good shot at the playoffs again. Tonight, a clash of crosstown rivals. A titanic contest, if you will. Who sinks and who swims. You'll see it live on Football Fridays in Georgia. Welcome to historic Northcutt Stadium in Marietta. It's another football Friday in Georgia on GPB as tonight the Hillgrove Hawks meet the Marietta Blue Devils in the Region 4 6A opener. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart joined by Larry Smith. And Larry, both these teams are 2-2. Two and two. Hillgrove won their first two. They've lost their last two to powerhouses North Gwinnett and Lovejoy by a total of 10 points. Marietta lost their first two. They've won their first two impressive victories, emphatic victories over South Cobb and Noonan. But tonight, it's the region opener, and as head coach Scott Burton told us, everything's amped up tonight. Yeah, it really is. Old versus new. A Marietta began playing in 1902. Hillgrove just their ninth season playing, but still two great Cobb County programs coming together tonight here at this uh, fantastic stadium. Kind of back to the future here with the running <laughs> games. If you like running football, you're going to see it here tonight. Marietta led by Curvante Benson. He's got offers from Georgia Tech and Duke, Middle Tennessee, rushed for over 600 yards already this season, had a 320-yard rushing performance in his last ball game against South Cobb. Yeah, and he's the guy to watch here for the Blue Devils. When you look at him, number 20 on the field, Curvante is somebody that he's the 100-yard uh, sprint champion in the state of Georgia. He's somebody who didn't start playing football until his sophomore year, so he may be the most underrated player in the state. But I guarantee you, after tonight and as it goes on forward, people will know who Curvante Benson is. Yeah, he was slow to get on the recruiting radar, yeah. but guaranteed he's going to pick up more offers as his senior season goes along. Now, Hillgrove, on the other hand, replacing Ricardre Bagley, who's gone on to play at Chattanooga. They've got a fine running attack as well. In fact, their head coach, Philip Ironside, says they want to set the tempo on offense by running the football with Sonny Harris and Eric Montgomery, who's committed to Georgia Southern. Yeah, and, and they will do that with, with both these guys. And he's going to run them probably every single time. Sonny Harris should take a look. He's 5'9", 160, a more of a shifty running back there uh, for the Hillgrove Hawks. And you mentioned Eric Montgomery, a bit bigger, a bit faster, six foot. He's over 200 pounds. You mentioned he's committed to Georgia Southern. Uh, he's somebody that coach has already said you're going to see a lot of these two. If these two can get going and set the tempo, it's a good night for the Hawks. And despite their size, differential don't be mistaken both these guys if they get open if they get out into the open they can get loose and they can go the distance now the third member of our team is John Nelson and he's down on the field well that's close I'm on top 
of a very important wall here at Northcutt at the cost of $40,000 in 1939 and 1940 because of a WPA project. All of the farmers here in the area in Marietta and anyone with stone was asked to bring it here to create this wall that circles around Northcutt Stadium. And as we celebrate the old girl tonight in her 75th year, this is a bit of a primer. The WPA said that if everyone brought the materials, then they would pay for the cost. So that's stage one of the history of Northcutt Stadium. And if someone has a ladder or a chair, I would greatly appreciate it so I could get down and continue to tell stories of Northcutt as we go along. Matt and Larry, can you help me out here a little bit? Uh, you're on your own there, John. You are on your own to get down from that wall. You got up there, you got to get yourself down. That's what Mama always said, right? So help! We'll have a lot of stories about Northcutt Stadium here tonight. Of course, it's in the process of getting approval for the renovation. It's going to cost anywhere from ten and a half to eleven and a half million dollars, and they're still in the process of uh, dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's and getting all the money in place. The Hillgrove Hawks at two and two on the season, coming off a 27-24 loss against Lovejoy in their last ball game, led by head coach Philip Ironside in his ninth season, the only coach they've ever had in school history, 63 and 25, his record at the Powder Springs School. And Scott Burton in his fifth season as the Marietta Blue Devils head coach, 26 and 23, his record. They've qualified for the state playoffs in the last three games and reached the second round in 2011 and 2012. Blue Devils at two and two on the season. They are coming off a 44-28 win against South Cobb after beating Noonan the week before, 37-14. Opening kickoff is brought to you by GoBuildGeorgia.com. Learn a skill, build a career. Do it now at GoBuildGeorgia.com. Kickoff from Ian Shannon is non-returnable. And so the ball will come out to the 20-yard line for the Hillgrove Hawks. And Ian Shannon, one of the top kickers in the country, committed to the Auburn Tigers. In fact, rated the number two punter in the nation by 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings. We'll have more on him as the evening progresses. Let's watch him during the pregame warm-ups, and he has a Cannon for a leg. It'll be fun to watch him perform tonight. Quarterback at the Hillgrove Hawks is the 5'9", 165-pound junior, number two, Matthew Wilson. Has completed 56.5% of his passes for 541 yards, four touchdowns and interception, averaging over 135 through the air per game. And he's going to take it on the first carry and brought down by Karan Cameron, the safety. Close to a first down carry for Philip or Matthew Wilson. Wilson replacing Elijah Ironside, the coach's son, who is the quarterback and a Class 6A first team All-State quarterback a year ago. Elijah Ironside now a redshirt freshman at Cumberland College. Handoff goes to Sonny Harris. No, instead it's the keeper by Matthew Wilson. And Matthew Wilson has the first down. We take a look at the starting lineups for Hillgrove on offense. It's brought to you by Regions Bank. Priest, Steen, Mathis, Wagley, and Barber up front. Hallman, Tull, and Long are the wide receivers, along with Bowens and Harris, the starting running back. And they throw it to Long. And bingo, Long close to a first down across the 42-yard line. Nice screenplay right there. That's really what Coach Ironside wants to do. And you see this on the replay here again. Couple of quick runs, quick snap outside. They like to do this kind of thing. Get the run to get the defense to focus to the line. And we've got a player down over here right now, injured. As we come back to live action, looks like it's number 61, Hayes Barber, who is still down, the junior uh, lineman for Hillgrove. Well, Hillgrove already lost one of their senior Offensive tackles earlier this season, Kevin Hurd suffered a season-ending broken ankle against Shiloh. They've lost two players to injuries so far this season. The other, a key defensive player in uh, Eric Jackson, their safety. So already two Hawks have been lost to season-ending injuries. And Hayes Barber, the uh, right tackle, is the guy that replaced Kevin Hurd when he went down with a season-ending injury. 
Yep. And Matt, I think here's the play. Rutcher at top of your screen, number 61 right there. You can see him as he kind of gets rolled under right there by the defender. It was rolled into him, uh, number 52. Hits him right there, just a tough, uh, tough injury. We hope that he's okay. Well, AJ, That's going to be interesting to see because uh, this will be essentially the third team right tackle now for Hillgrove. You mentioned Jackson on the Hillgrove defensive side. He's a defensive leader and suffered an injury with the torn Achilles. Running sprints at the practice. Ball is loose. It is picked up and then stripped again. Seward picked up the fumble from Marietta and started heading towards the goal line, and then he got stripped right after that. Let's see who got on top of it. It looks like the Blue Devils have it. And Marietta does indeed come up with the fumble. What a turn of events for the home team, Marietta Blue Devils, on this one. You can see, I'm not sure the running back ever had the ball. One more look at this right now. Yeah, he yeah, never was, did. Yeah, the quarterback uh, kind of pulled it back there. Matthew Wilson, a little bit of a miscommunication there. It looked like he was going to try to fake the handoff, but unfortunately, it's running back. Eric Montgomery took off with it. Ball is on the ground. Marietta has the ball in Hillgrove territory, first down. Well, here's the six foot, 170 pound senior quarterback for Marietta, number two, Brenton Martin. And Martin's going to go to the air on the first snap across the middle looking for Dukes. And the pass goes incomplete. Martin on the season has completed 57% of his passes for 502 yards, five touchdowns, and just one interception. That's 125 and a half yards per game. And he's also rushed for 130 yards this season, five yards a carry and three touchdowns. Keeper by Martin. Mm -hmm. And Martin will not be able to turn the quarter. Nice pursuit by the safety, Malik Shavery. Shavery making the tackle as we take a look at the Regions Bank starting lineup for the Blue Devils up front. It is Marshall, McClesh, Sullivan, Williams, and Botang. The wide receivers are Cooper, Marshall, and Dukes with Benson and Berniard in the backfield. Third down and 10. <laughs> Heavy rush and a quarterback sack. Ryan Moore, the defensive tackle, gets his third sack of the season. Drops Martin for a loss, and we'll see what Marietta does here on fourth down and long. Yeah, great play. Watch this here as they come right underneath. Moore just beats his man. Right up front there, going up against uh, Andres McClesh, the senior, left guard, beat Bulls right past him, stays in good pursuit and gets the sack and forces fourth and long for Marietta. And here's our first chance to see Ian Shannon, again, one of the top punters in the nation. He stands at his 46 to kick, no rush. Let's see if he drops it inside the 10-yard line. Fair catch is made by Bingo Long at the six-yard line. A 32-yard kick by Ian Shannon. And that's going to pin Hillgrove deep into their own territory for their second possession of the ball game. Shannon averaging 40 yards per kick this season on 12 punts. A year ago, as a place kicker, he was 16 of 18 on his field goal attempts, with nine of those coming from 40-plus yards. He's kicked a 51-yard field goal this season. So Hillgrove five. back on offense. Tall kid. Wilson swings it out. That's Sonny Harris with the catch, and he's run out of bounds, shy of the 15-yard line as we take a look at the Regions Bank starting defense for the Blue Devils. Knight, Marshall, Williams, and Colburn up front. Charles Sanders and Seward are the linebackers. Lester, Smith, Cameron, and Henderson in the secondary. First down carry for Matthew Wilson. Matthew Wilson came in with close to 200 yards rushing in their first four games, and he's picked up 11 right there. Yeah, good blocking. Watch right here. It's a number 56 uh, trying to clear the way, moving right out there. Uh, Kerry Steen, the left guard. 
Fast tempo for the Hawks. Yeah, Sonny Harris with the carry, driven out of bounds by Martel Sanders, their leading tackler for the Blue Devils. And it looks like Eric Montgomery will now check in for Sonny Harris. Coach promised a steady dose of these two. He said, you know, we don't really care who starts, who does what. They're both going to play a lot and get a lot of carries, a lot of touches. And that's the plan so far in the opening minutes. Get the ball in their hands as many times as possible. They have a predetermined rotation to try to keep those guys fresh. Bad snap, nice block by Montgomery to free Wilson. Wilson was about to get clobbered in a nice pickup block by Montgomery so that they at least get back close to the line of scrimmage. Well, you know, Matt, not only that, but be able to collect the ball because if, if Montgomery doesn't make that block, I'm not sure that Wilson is able to collect that errant snap and, uh, and make some kind of positive yardage out of it. That could have been uh, another fumble right there for the Hawks. Third down and three. Wilson, four carries for 23 yards already. This time he's going to throw. It goes up top, and it's caught by Long. Bingo Long inside the 40-yard line. Nice toss by Matthew Wilson. Great touch on that play, Larry. 31 yards and into Marietta territory. Well, that was great. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Watch this play right here as they get a quick tempo for these guys. They're right up to the line again uh, very quickly. He knows right where he wants to go. Great timing pattern, just like in practice. First down, big gain into Blue Devil territory. Eighth catch of the season for Bingo Long. First and 10 from close to the 35. Keeper again by Matthew Wilson. And Wilson running the ball very effectively. The ball is out again. And Marietta's got it. Second fumble on as many possessions for Hillgrove. Dwayne Smith, the sophomore with the pickup on this. I was just about to say for Hillgrove, I love the way they're doing a lot of misdirection, keeping the Marietta defense uh, off kilter. But look at this, just reaches in. That's great uh, reaching in by Cameron, number 19, number 42, Seward, uh, Seward right there. One more look at it here. Reaching in, stripping the ball away. That was 42, Kyrie Seward, who made the strip right there. Smith jumps on it, and Marietta, two forced turnovers, forced fumbles right here in the first four minutes of the ball game. That's the second time Seward's had his hands on the ball he picked up the loose fumble on the first possession he causes the fumble on the second possession and now Marietta back on offense Berniard in motion behind the line keeper by Martin and he gets dropped for a loss good penetration there the defensive end Josh Price making the tackle and then Jamarco with a row helping out and one more look at this Staying home right there. Good defensive uh, presence to stay right there. Nothing doing for that young man. That's just good defense by the Hawks. Interesting, they haven't gone to Benson yet. Do you say the same thing? <laughs> Martin has time. Going up top for Smith and incomplete. Austin Woods, the corner, number seven, was running right there with Dwayne Smith. And it's going to be third down and long. To a, an apparent pass play, and to your point, you're right. Uh, I think if you told us a half hour ago, we'd see six plays out of the Marietta offense and not see the ball in Cravante's hands. They faked it to him once, yeah. but they have not handed it off to him yet. Let's see if they do on third down and 11 here, run some sort of a draw play or something. Six in the box for the Hillgroves. They bring a heavy rush. Try to set up the screen, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage by Witherow. Another big-time play by Jamarco Witherow. The 5'11", 230 sophomore defensive tackle. Make that 250 sophomore defensive tackle. Yeah, he plays a lot bigger than 5'11". Look at this uh, present the penetration he gets right here again. We've called his number several times already here in the opening minutes. Witherow. Coming out of the game now here on fourth down with the punt team coming in. Two great plays on defense by the sophomore. Shannon on the punt again from his 11-yard line. Booming kick. Long wants to return it. Gets down on his knees to field it at the 35-yard line. And Hillgrove goes on offense there for the third time tonight after a 42-yard kick by Shannon. Key Larry, when we come back, will be can the Hawks hold on to the football? We'll find out after this. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, go you. And viewers like you, thank you. 
nature's three-part special presentation continues. Baby penguins take their first steps. To capture every moment, spy cams pop up in the most curious places. Some are welcome, others ruffle a few feathers. On Why Wednesday at 8, only on GPB. Welcome back, 7.05 for the first here at Northcutt Stadium, scoreless between Hillgrove and Marietta. And as we talk about the cut this evening, there are seven banners here on the south wall that signify a lot of the glory time that have happened here for both the schools, the Lemon Street Hornets, who were the GIA champs in 1966, and Marietta when they won their only state championship in 1967, the year after integration, when the two schools actually merged. So when you've heard talk here in Marietta about being somebody in the Victory Bell and Coach Wilkins and all of the two schools merging to get that one state championship at Marietta, this is just a small part of that history here tonight. Let's send it back upstairs to Matt and Larry. Thanks, John. That 1967 state champions under uh, legendary coach French Johnson for whom this field is named. It's French Johnson Field at Northcutt Stadium. Only uh, state champion ever from Cobb County. They defeated Columbus 14 to seven in the championship game at historic Grant Field. That's pretty amazing. Look at that, 1966, 1967. The, the football talent that was here in this area at that time to win those two states. And in 66, Marietta was a state runner up. So some good teams back then. Yeah. Nice that they're both being honored here at this, this stadium. Sonny Harris on the carry, mm -hmm. and Harris close to a first down on that carry right there, tackled downfield by Michael Spencer, the linebacker, actually defensive end, pardon me. Pickup of nine on the play, second down and one coming up. You know, Matt, if they can just hold on to the ball, they've already have four first downs to none for Marietta, they just, but they have two fumbles. Sonny Harris again gets away from Seward, and Harris running strong, picks up the first down as he crosses the 50 down to the 48. Well, great play right here. One more look at it. That's a, a great move right there by Seward, but he can't hold on to him. Look at the number of blue shirts that have a shot at Sonny Harris, and none can bring him down. Great effort by that young man to get the first down for Hillgrove. Trey Blunt, the sophomore wide receiver with the grab. Just his third catch of the year, and he picks up about three on the plug. Blunt, a 6'3", 185-pound sophomore, twice invited to play in the East Bay All-American Bowl, which is the National Youth Football All-Star Game down in Naples, Florida. He's considered one of the top up-and-coming wide receivers uh, in the nation, or at least has the potential to be that. Right up the middle on the run by Eric Montgomery. Yes. As expected, as you look back to Blunt, and again, that young man and the talent here. As you mentioned, a lot of young players here on both sides. This is one of the better ones in the state. Third down and a couple yards to go from just inside the 40. Keeper Matthew Wilson in the first down. Well, that's the play they tried a moment ago when they fumbled the ball, but this time, <laughs> Wilson and Montgomery. Uh, they were on the same page. Watch here as a uh, look at the Marietta defender thinks he's got him right there. That's Seward yet again. He's all in the backfield. The problem is Wilson held onto the ball. Big gain and out to another first down for Hillgrove. Hey, they've had no problem moving the ball yeah. here. They just can't hold on to it. Six first downs and now a flag comes out. Substitution penalty against Hillgrove. Might have had 15 in the huddle and I'm only exaggerating, but <laughs> it's a lot of. A lot of white shirts out there. Greg Hoggle, our referee tonight, backs up Hillgrove five yards. This is the fifth all-time meeting between these two teams. Hillgrove leads the series 3-1, including a 21-13 victory at home last season. When Elijah Ironside was the quarterback. On first and 15. Right up the middle again, Matthew Wilson. 
Gets it back beyond the original line of scrimmage and down to the 35. A steady dose of Matthew Wilson running the ball here tonight so well, far. We've seen him more than we've seen the two running backs. Harris Montgomery, watch this. Watch how this freezes the defense. See this? Look at how many blue shirts. You see four blue shirts follow Montgomery over to the left. The thing is, Wilson has the ball. By the time they realize it, he's got momentum. He's found a hole, and he's made some good yardage. Six carries now, 36 yards for Wilson here in the first quarter. Being chased by Spencer, just has to get rid of it and gets buried back at the 50-yard line by Michael Spencer. Yeah, great pressure right there by Marietta Front. One more look at it here. As you can see, a lot of blue shirts. Wilson looks up, doesn't like this, really doesn't like this. <laughs> Finally gets rid of it. You can't blame him on that. Third Scary down sights. and nine, yep. Setting up the screen pass. It was nearly intercepted. Tackle broken there. And a loss of yardage on the play on the completion to Tavion Walker. Screen is a very big part of their passing game. And that's why they've got about four or five guys with pass receptions. But on that case right there, they uh, had nothing doing. And John Devine is on to kick for Hillgrove standing at his 50-yard line. And Benson to recover. Maybe his first touch of the game. On the 10. To receive. They kick it away from Benson, and it's going to be caught in the air at the 50-yard line. Great coverage downfield. Jeremiah Bridges made that catch in the air on a 27-yard kick, and that's one way to keep them from returning it. If you don't have the GPB Sports app yet, then you don't know what you're missing. You can watch tonight's game live on the app if you have to leave home. Get the latest scores from around the state, football news, blogs, and so much more. It's free at the App Store. Download it today. So Marietta still looking for their first first out of the game here, almost nine minutes into the into the contest. We're still waiting for Benson to touch the ball, and he finally does. Trevante Benson crashes out across the 15, up close to the 17-yard line. So close to nine minutes into the game, and a third possession, Benson finally gets a carry. Keeper by Brenton Martin, not going anywhere. Dropped by B.J. Bobby, the free safety. And it's going to be third down. Great defense there by Bobby to stay home. Fake to Benson. Third down. Benson the carry. Benson the first down. Nice challenge by Benson and ran right into the defender and right by him. Good strong run. Cameron to the linebacker. Their leading tackler made the stop, but a first down for Marietta finally. Well, he's 5'8". He's 195. He's a powerful runner. And again, a sprinter. We mentioned at the very top, he's a 100-meter sprint champion in the state of Georgia, so he's got that good size and speed. Got to use him more often if you're Marietta. Now they're starting to get Benson involved. This time he gets dropped from behind by Kalechi Kaga, the linebacker, his 30th tackle of the season. So take a look at the Regions Bank starting lineup for Hillgrove on defense. Price, Moore, Witherow, and Elkins up front. Davis, Kaga, and two are the linebackers with Phelps, Bobby, Chevry, and Woods in the secondary. Benson again. Now they've figured out Benson's back there. <laughs> now Benson getting a steady dose of carries right there. Price in on that tackle for Hillgrove, and it's going to be third down. Well, it's a no-brainer. Give him some touches, start getting first down, start moving the ball downfield, and that's what's happened here for Marietta on their third series. 31 carries for 320 yards, a school record wow. against South Cobb in their 44-28 victory last week. Scored four touchdowns, all of them coming in the third quarter when they rally from a 14-7 deficit to win the ball game. Four carries now for Benson, 19 yards. He'll get it again. Carry number five, two with the tackle and the ball pops out, but at the end of the play. Might have been Ryan Moore on that tackle right there. When you look here is that watch the, the hole that's opened up here. And again, the, the good hesitation here on the fake just a quick moment. Now, wants the hole right here. And number 30 is going to go after him, slows him down, helps with the tackle. 
the 30th, Cameron two. And we saw ripped pants last week in a Creekside already ripped jersey trying to hold on to Curvante in this game, and he's got the ball again. Benson, another strong run. Kaga put a hit on him, and Benson picked up another three yards. Running strong after contact. That's one of the things that Philip Ironside told us that Benson really doesn't change his demeanor. You keep hitting him and keep hitting him, and he just keeps on going. He is a solid 5'8, 195. So we talked about a newcomer to football. Somebody next level is going to get a very special player once his recruitment is done. Georgia Tech, Duke, Wake Forest among those who have offered along with Middle Tennessee. Illegal procedure the call against Marietta, so their second down and four will become a second down and nine. 320 yards is always a great number. I don't care what level <laughs> you're rushing for that in one game. You but you consider that, again, here's a school that's been playing football for 112 years, and this young man, number 20, Gervonta Benson, is the one who's run for more yards in a game than anybody in school history. That's, that's really, really uh, exceptional. Broke Derek Tinsley's school record. Tinsley, who went on to star for the Tennessee Volunteers, is now back at his alma mater as the running backs coach. Benson. Again, a lot of contact right there at the line of scrimmage as he's brought down at the 42-yard line. Kaga again on that tackle for Hill Grove. I talked with Coach Tinsley before the game, and he was joking that he told uh, Cervante, he said, yeah, but you did it as a senior. I did it as a freshman, so I still got you. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the final play of the first quarter. Played 12 minutes at North Cut Stadium. Here come the Marietta Blue Devils. Hillgrove running strong in that first quarter if they can only hang on to the football. We'll head to the second, still scoreless in Marietta. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way. The new College Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts fans closer to the game experience. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of college football interactive exhibits. Tickets available at cfbhall.com. You look twice before crossing. You exercise, you choose the salad occasionally, but when it comes to staying well, Physically, financially, emotionally, going it alone is hard. So Cigna has your back and your knees 24-7 in sickness and in health. Answering your questions, giving you some coaching, helping you get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Cigna. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG college in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. Sometimes, inspiration comes in the most unusual way. Enter GPB's video contest. You could win a cash prize and make a difference. How can you help stop the drop?
looking at some Hillgrove and Marietta fans looking to see some points on the board. It's still scoreless here at historic Northcutt Stadium as we head into the second quarter. And we know Marietta's got that. Ian Shannon, one of the top kickers in the country, committed to Auburn. We're looking to see some big play from him tonight. And we're also looking to see some big play from you, all of you watching at home. We have some trivia for you, some social trivia. Tonight, we want to know what former Marietta place kicker kicked for the 1980 National Championship Bulldog, Georgia Bulldog Squad. Take to Twitter, take to Facebook, Instagram if you choose to do so and let us know uh, who that is, who that kicker is, and we'll return in the fourth quarter with our winner for the night. And you'll get the best prize you can imagine, a Football Fridays in Georgia t-shirt for you to wear the rest of the season. Back to you guys up in the booth. Thank you, Grace. That's Grace Olson down on the field along with John Nelson, Matt Stewart, and Larry Smith up top with you at historic Northcutt Stadium. And that kicker uh, for Marietta, the, the answer to the question, he's one of two Marietta Blue Devil kickers that went on to kick in the National Football League as well. Hmm. Marietta, ninth play of the drive for them, and they have yet to cross midfield on the ninth play of the drive. So we'll have a penalty here against Marietta. That'll back them up five yards on the third down and seven. So they'll start the second quarter, third down and 12 from their own 37. Yeah, I'm not sure that Marietta was set coming out of the timeout after the quarter break there. Uh, the quarterback was uh, late coming out. Martin late coming out of the sideline. So we had a little bit of mis a little bit of confusion here and some misinformation going on. Let's see if they can get it together here in third and long. Watch for Benson. He is split to the bottom of your screen now out of your picture. Empty backfield set for Marietta. Martin heavy rush. Quarterback sack for the Hawks back at the 33-yard line, and that is Grant Elkins with the quarterback sack, the second sack for the Hawks in this ballgame. Let's check this out here one more time again. Watch this. This is Elkins right here on the left side of your screen, and watch him here get some good penetrations. We roll it now. Uh, just goes right around the side, waits, good pressure there, and he's right in the right place at the right time. Great defense right there by Hillgrove and another punt right now for Marietta. Bingo Long gets on top of that punt just barely at the 29-yard line following a 39-yard kick by Ian Shannon. Third quarterback sack of the season for Grant Elkins brought that Marietta drive to a close. And now the Hawks will go back on offense here to start the second quarter. And the story for Hillgrove offensively, Larry, in the first quarter, Matthew Wilson was 78 yards of offense, 36 rushing, 42 passing. Yeah, that's it's been uh, that's been the big story, Martin. Um, you know all that he's done. They've moved the ball very well, but again, the two fumbles and those two opening drives uh, that stopped him. Uh, if they can just get something going, they can get some good momentum with the two running backs, Montgomery and Harris. Wilson doing a great job. Got to hold on to the ball, and a flag is down. I think we have an illegal shift. No, we have offsides on Marietta. Now, Marietta right now needs to settle down and just uh, focus on the play in front of them. A lot of confusion right now on both sides of the ball for the Blue Devils. So first down and five. Sonny Harris with the spin move has to dive back to get to the line of scrimmage. Harris, 330 yards rushing coming into the ball game, 6.7 a carry, averaging 82 and a half a game with three touchdowns. 5'9", 170 senior. And it's second down and four. Wilson hums it out there to Long, and Long dives forward past the six for a first down. Bingo Long with the catch. Nice job of the Marietta secondary. You saw uh, Kellen Priest, number 64, watch him here as he's going to, this guy at the top of your screen is going to go out trying to set that block. But Marietta does a nice job of getting ahead of the, the block that's coming, get to Long, and to make the stop for a minimal gain. They do get a first down out of it, but Hawks hoping for much more out of that. So first and 10, ball at the 40-yard line. Three catches now for Bingo Long. Pickup of two on the play. Not much running room for Sonny Harris, who's gotten the bulk of the work, at least from a ball-carrying standpoint so far. But Eric Montgomery checks back in as Harris goes to the sideline. Nice tackle there by number one, Rick Asenzo in the middle. Montgomery, the Georgia Southern commit, 6'4", 
Lunges past the sticks, close to a first down. That was great strength. He had Martel Sanders just jumped on him and rode him there in the final three or four yards of that carry. We talked about Montgomery, six foot, 200 pounds. Going to head down to States for home play college football next year for Georgia Southern and the Eagles. How about those Georgia Southern Eagles? Big winners over App State last night yeah. on national television. I had a chance to call their victory at South Alabama on ESPN last Saturday. Yeah, that's a team first year in the uh, FBS. They, they might have a chance to win the Sun Belt Conference. Keeper by Matthew Wilson. That's a first down carry. He crosses the 50. Georgia Southern almost beat Tech and Bobby Don almost beat NC State and Raleigh. Yeah, they could be 5-0 and oh right now. That's right. <laughs> Easily. Good program, good start in the year that they move up. Willie Fritz, the new head coach down there, coming to Statesboro from Sam Houston State. If you're a running back like Eric Montgomery, Statesboro is a good place to sure commit is. to. Sure is. They're going to run the ball. First and ten now, clock ticking close to three minutes left, or, or three minutes into, I should say, the second quarter. That's Bridges on the catch. Jeremiah Bridges with his sixth catch of the season. He had a 70-yard reception in week number two. Their 14-6 win at Shiloh set up their second touchdown with that 70-yard catch. You know, I'm, I think Hillgrove should try to take one deep here. They've a lot of running plays, a lot of screen plays. They might get some luck if they get some one-on-one -on -one coverage here down deep. See if they try that at some point. Harris, first down carry for Harris. Finally spun out of bounds. Martel Sanders, the linebacker, 10-yard pickup for Harris. Coach Hillside talking about these two, or Coach Ironside, I should say, talking about this for Hill Grove. These two guys, and here's Davis again. He mentioned at the top a bit shiftier uh, than Montgomery is, a little more power for Montgomery, but these two are really a handful. And when you count in Wilson and the runs he's made, a lot of offense here in the first half for Hill Grove, but no points to show for it yet. And Ironside says Eric is the faster, Sonny is the quicker. Tavion Walker down the sideline, talking about quick. He sprints into the end zone for the touchdown. 34 yards on the screen play to Tavion Walker, his second touchdown reception of the season. Hillgrove on the board, 6-0. Well, that's the play that Coach Philip Einside was looking for to kind of break out. He, he said he's gonna, we're going to run the ball a lot. We're going to run the ball to set up our screens. And they finally did that. He keeps screening and screening and screening, and that's why I'm up here and not on the sidelines coaching. He didn't go deep. He stuck with the player that he wants, and it turns into six points. And the first score on the board tonight here at Northcutt Stadium. Abney on for the PAT. He puts it through. And three minutes and 45 seconds into the second quarter, Hillgrove finally breaks through and has a 7-0 lead. This moment, getting here took three years of sleepless nights and postponed vacations. Your dad said, play it safe. Your husband kept the faith. But franchising is why you partnered with Regions in the first place. We share your vision for moving forward. And at moments like this, Hi, Steve. that makes all the difference. Is your business at a turning point? Regions. Today, companies in the aerospace, advanced manufacturing, and film industries need skilled workers, and the earning potential is high. Go Build Georgia can show you where the jobs are and what skills you need to get them. And the Technical College System of Georgia has fast, affordable training for these great paying careers. Build your blueprint for success at GoBuildGeorgia.com and look to the Technical College System of Georgia to put your plan into action. Beautiful fall night in Marietta, Georgia, historic Northcutt Stadium where the Hillgrove Hawks have taken a 7-0 lead on the Marietta Blue Devils on the 34-yard screen pass from Matthew Wilson to Tavion Walker. Yeah, the TCSG touchdown replay. Watch Walker here as he extends. But we're going to show this one more look at this. We'll take a replay of this. <laughs> this screenplay turned into six for Hillgrove. Uh, Walker trying to reach out for the goal line. And boy, you know what? That's really, really close. You could argue that he let go of the ball before the goal line. It's tough to tell. It appears he had it, but uh, not much longer. It does count as a touchdown for Hillgrove. But boy, I tell you what, that was awfully close. 
Impressive eight play 71 yard drive capped by that touchdown pass from Matthew Wilson and took in or taken in rather by Tavion Walker for his second touchdown of the season for Wilson. That is his fifth touchdown pass. And Hillgrove 10 first downs to Marietta's two here in the first 16 minutes. You had said it all along, Larry. They've really kind of dominated. Had that not been for turnovers, their lead might have been greater than 7 0 right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's the only thing really that's holding back right now. They've done what they wanted to do on offense. Great plan. Again, the screen play. They keep trying it, keep trying it, keep trying it. And finally, they break it open for six. Elric Abney set to kick off for Hillgrove with his yellow shoes. Pooch kick over to the side. Berniard takes it at the 24-yard line. Nakia Berniard coming this way towards the middle of the field, makes it to the 34 before being dropped by Jamal Sutton. And that's where the Marietta Blue Devils go on offense here in the second quarter with eight minutes to play in the half. Tell you what, yeah, watch how many steps he takes, Abney. <laughs> Almost looked like he was going to try to maybe do a, an onside kick maybe. A little bit different. <laughs> I think the goal there is to kick it anywhere that Cervante Benson is not. That's right. So first and 10, ball at the 35. Brenton Martin makes a man miss. Sprints for a first down and gets across midfield before being dropped by Cameron Two. A 17-yard pickup and a first down for the Blue Devils. It's a big pickup right there. Uh, Brenton Martin, the senior, very smart play. Watch him here, uses Benson as the decoy. And you can see the linebackers follow him. And that's what a running back like that does. Everyone's watching him in every play. You got to use him even as a decoy. And they did and get a first down. First and 10. Cervante Benson this time moving the pile and a flag comes out late after Benson gets about three and a half on the carry. It's against Hillgrove. Marietta, good field position after that short kickoff. So 15-yard penalty on this, Matt, and you think about the big 17-yard run. First play of scrimmage from Martin. Benson gets a nice carry, plus 15 yards, and all of a sudden Marietta's in business inside the Hawks' 30-yard line. Yep, first and 10 from the 29. It's Cooper in motion behind the line. Benson with the carry, and nice tackle by Malik Chevry, the strong safety. Top tackler in the secondary with 25 stops and a couple of interceptions entering the ball game. Did not let Benson turn the corner on him. No, and he showed you why. And here's another look at it from the low angle. Watch him here fight the block off. Great job by Chevry and stay with him because, again, with his speed and power, he might have broken that open if he'd gotten around the corner. Martin just lucky to hold on to that snap. Steps out of bounds back at the 30-yard line and loses three yards on the play. 31-yard Tough snap here, as you mentioned. Good job by Martin just to hold on to it. Good athletic move. Don't do anything crazy. Take your short loss and regroup for the next play. Brenton Martin, a second-year starter, following in the footsteps of Anthony Jennings, who's now the starting quarterback, of course, at LSU as a sophomore now. Anthony Jennings, star quarterback here at Marietta before signing with the Bengal Tigers. Third down and 11. Blitz coming off the edge from two. Pass is nearly intercepted. Martin had to get rid of it in a hurry, trying to get that ball to Benson and nearly intercepted by Austin Woods, the corner. But real strong pressure coming by the linebacker, Cameron, two off the edge. Yeah, I like the play call. Just couldn't quite connect here. Look at him here on the left side. It's DJ Hall coming in. Number 28. I, I threw it a little bit early with that pressure coming on. I don't think Hall knew it was already out of his hand. And here is Ian Shannon, a 48-yard kick from the left hash. He already has a 51-yarder this season. This is well within his range. High snap, kick is blocked. 
That ball is loose and covered by Marietta back at the 50. Hillgrove may have finally gotten on top of it. Either way, the ball goes over to the Hawks at the 45-yard line. And looks like Shannon got roughed up on the play as well. That was a bad snap, though. That wasn't his fault on the block. Yeah, really bad snap. Watch this. Boy, he brings it down. Shannon didn't know whether to kick it or stop. Tried to kick it. It's blocked. Great job here by Jordan Dukes to fight off four Hillgrove Hawks. One more look at it. That busted play at that point. You give Shannon credit trying to... Uh, and chicken up just a bit on the play, as you mentioned. Yeah, he got nailed after that kick was blocked. They, of course, when the kick is blocked, man, kicker is free game. And they leveled him, too. They punished him. First down carry right there for Sonny Harris, 12 yards on the play. And now the Hawks are inside the 35. And now following the block, they've got a great chance, Larry, to go up two scores here. Yeah, a lot of momentum here. Their band made the trip down, so they're getting into it now. The fans on the other side, a little bit louder. Everyone's blood kind of moving a little bit now. Wilson got a man open and overshoots Richard Hallman, his intended target. That would have been a touchdown. Yeah, you get the juices, juices going here. You got a little excited. Wilson saw him break open past his... Uh, uh, passes defenders. We take one more look at that play on that fourth down play, that attempted field goal. Watch Shannon here. Focus number 38, the kicker. He gets he nailed. He gets hit, and he just, yeah, just gets leveled. Second down and 10. Harris, big run. First down for Harris. Sprinting down the sideline, and Harris out of bounds at the 15-yard line. You know, one thing, too, <laughs> it could just be coincidence, but it seems that Hillgrove loves that side of the field. There's actually, it, it kind of goes downfield uh, in, into that. The, the field is not level. Got a crown on it. There's a big crown, yeah. That's coming back, though. Penalty looks like against Hillgrove. Yeah, but there's a crown here in the middle. Kind of goes down on each side, and they've, they're literally running downhill as they run toward that side of the field. Well, this penalty is a big break for Marietta. So instead of having it first and 10 inside the 15, now it's second down and long back at their own, or back at the Marietta 38, I should say. Yeah, big break for the Marietta defense right here. This, this drive is, is big for, the, for Marietta. They need to to get a stop here for the Hawks. Keep them getting on the board again before halftime. Under six minutes to play, second quarter. Wilson, six of eight passing, setting up the screen, incomplete, trying to get the ball to Montgomery, and Wilson got nailed back at the 50-yard line. That yeah. was Kendrick Knight, the defensive end, who got a stick on it. Yeah, the sophomore defensive end. One more look at this. Again, just pushing right through. Good penetration here. Knight keeps coming. Forces the play. Now it's third down and 16. Blitz coming for Marietta. They throw that screen pass to Bridges. Bridges cuts back in the middle of the field. Ball is out and covered by Marietta. A third fumble for Hillgrove in the first 18 minutes of this game. Well, I tell you what, if Marietta can get a win out of this tonight, they should go out and buy 11 game balls for every single guy on this defense because they've just done such a tremendous job. Again, the screen play. Hillgrove loves to run this. You see all the linemen out there. But the one thing is you've got to hold on to the ball once you finally uh, begin to uh, get into traffic right there. He doesn't do that. Ball is pulled out right there, and the recovery, and yet again, Marietta and their defense stops yet another Hillgrove drive. Third fumble Forced third one lost here in the first half uh, by Hillgrove. Hillgrove had five fumbles in their first four games combined. They have three here in the first 18 minutes and 20 seconds of this game to keep Marietta in the ball game. And here comes Cervante Benson. And nice tackle by the corner, Austin Woods, who comes up to meet him after Benson picks up a couple yards on the play. One thing I've noticed about Benson, he's not getting any yardage up the middle. Everything for him is out to the side or out to the edges. Love to see him with his power and his speed. Run some plays for him inside. See if we can kind of break him loose. 10 for 42. 
four yards per carry, a far cry from his seven yards per carry that he was averaging coming into the ball game. And to your point, there is nothing for him up the middle. Third down coming up. On the other side, I give Hillgrove credit for keeping him in check. You know, we didn't see him in the first two drives. Marietta's first two drives went three and out. No touches at all for Benson. They've gotten him involved since then, but Hillgrove has done a good job of keeping him in check. Third down and six. Four and a half minutes to play here in the first half. And a timeout's been called by Marietta. Take a look at the Marietta Blue Devils, uh, Blue Devils resume. Long illustrious history. 1967 state champions, 15 region titles, the last coming in 2005. In fact, they were back to back 2004 and 2005, and they had six region titles that came between 1990 and 96. NFL players include Eric Zier, Rex Robinson, Scott Sisson, Richard Shelton, who played for the Steelers. And their ex-coaches include Friday Richards, James Friday Richards, who starred here, went on to play at the University of Florida and with the New York Jets. Dexter Wood had a great run here, uh, stretched there in the late 80s into the 90s of 65 and 10. Ray Broadaway and French Johnson, they won their state title with French Johnson as the head coach. Field is named in his honor. Scott Burton is just the fifth head coach this school has had since 1956. That's impressive. That's an impressive list of coaches right there until you talk about some of the great coaches who've coached high school football here in the state of Georgia. Great, great uh, line in the five and a half and a half century, half decade, half century, I should say. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, we did MLK earlier in the year, and the Lions have had four head coaches in four years. <laughs> Off the hands of Malik Marshall. Malik Marshall has been one of the pleasant surprises for Marietta. In fact, Scott Burton told us he has exceeded expectations. But right there, he lets a sure pass reception drop out of his hands. Fourth down. Again, Marietta, they do this. They line up like they're going to go for it, then shift into their punt formation and run Shannon out onto the field. Shannon standing at his 16. Another booming kick. Long retreating. Back to the 21, and he fumbles. And fortunately for Hillgrove, it goes out of bounds. Yeah, I think Shannon's OK with that 52-yard punt wow. right there, Matt. <laughs> If he was shaken up, there was no problem at all. And once again, once again the Hillgrove fumbles. And just let's just take a look at all these different fumbles here. There's one on the missed exchange between the quarterback and the running back. Marietta recovers. And yet again, here we go. The Matthew quarterback Wilson. and the keeper, Matthew Wilson. He fumbles the ball. Marietta recovers. The one good thing, though, for Hillgrove, they've got to put it on the scoreboard. And just a few moments ago, yet another strip. Recovery right there. And then another fumble just now, but again, this one they hang on to as it rolls out of bounds. So first and 10 for the Hawks. Matthew Wilton on the carry and a lot of room to run, and Dukes gets him on the ground. Close to a first down at the 36-yard line. He's had great success, and right now, the Hillgrove offensive game plan is working well. You can see him right there pulling his man. Kerry Steen, the guard, pulls in front of him, creates that whole blocker in front of him. First down run for Wilson. Eight carries, 51 yards for Wilson. And Sonny Harris not going anywhere. Michael Spencer gets him in the grasp and will not let him go. Great job there by Spencer. And that's the key, don't, don't let him go. <laughs> He's tough to hold on to. Great job, reads the play well and just keeps hanging on. <laughs> Spencer. Leading the defensive line in tackles when the night started with nine so far in their first four games. Big tackle for loss right there. Changed numbers from 33 to 52 this week as they've moved into the offensive line. Up top, man, open, can't connect with Holman. That's the second time they couldn't get the ball to Holman, and the second time it would have been a touchdown. Well, Holman, 6'4", senior. He's already committed to Georgia State. Uh, he's a Division I talent over there. 
you know, it's just a matter of time before those two connect. Those were two uh, balls. Hallman has shown that he can get free and beat his man. They just haven't been able to connect yet. Flag on the field. And interference on Marietta. And there you go. Tell you what, halftime right now at Marietta, 313 away. The Blue Devils have just got to get together and get in sync on both sides of the ball. Uh, their on offense that last series was all over the place. Well, the interference call, I, we were having a hard time finding it on the replay. And certainly the pass was overthrown. I mean, it was, you could almost say, unless, of course, but that would have been holding, but we never saw it. That's why we didn't show it to you, because we couldn't find it. <laughs> but if we find it, <laughs> we'll show it to you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, they marked off the penalty. I guess they're trying to decide whether the penalty markoffs give them a first down or not. So they're going to bring out the chains. Gorgeous night for football. First Friday in fall. A little bit short. Hillgrove has really dominated the tempo of the game. Yardage wise, they have a significant edge on Marietta. It's the fumbles, though, that have killed them three, actually four, three that they lost. And now second down and short here for Hillgrove, but just over three minutes to play in the second quarter. And it's a dry night. It's not like it's a very wet night or a lot of moisture. Uh, good job by the Marietta defenders for stripping the ball. All three of those fumbles that Hillgrove lost were balls that were stripped by the defense. Harris gets his 10th carry of the ball game and picks up a first down, and Harris sprinting down the sideline. Look at him pull away with that speed, and he's finally dragged down from behind by the defensive end, Kendrick Knight. But you saw the burst of speed for Sonny Harris and deep into Marietta territory now for the Hillgrove Hawks. Yeah, one more look at this. Again, watches it. He just uh, freezes Dukes there on the side, number 80, and just bowls right by him. I give Knight some credit, number 11 right there, the sophomore, for catching up with him. Again, he's a defensive end. Davis, or I'm sorry, Harris, the running back, the faster guy, but that's Knight, the sophomore, who runs him down. That's impressive. 34-yard gain. Screen pass to Bridges. Bridges dropped over there on the far side by Martel Sanders. And again, that screen play. Yeah, Philip Ironside tells us, you know, they like to run that screen game for a number of reasons. And one of it's because a lot of kids touch the ball, and he figures... The more they touch the ball, the happier they are and the harder they play. Yeah, you watch number 64, uh, Kellen Priest. He's a 6'1", 6'4", lineman out there. See, they're at the top of your screen. He's right up here. Uh, he's the guy that's going to go out on those screens every single time and try to create uh, a block out there. Eric Montgomery, nice open field tackle by Martel Sanders, the Mike linebacker. Sanders with some big shoes to fill here in this Marietta program. Ty Tomlin signed with the University of North Carolina. One more look at it here. Good pursuit right away. You see Knight there making the tackle, but it was Martel Sanders, another sophomore linebacker, got there first to force Harris outside into the, into the uh, arms of Knight. Third down and four. Touchdown, Holman. This time they do connect with Richard Holman. And it is 13 to nothing on the 12-yard touchdown pass, second of the night for Matthew Wilson, and second touchdown catch of the season for Richard Holman. Hill Grove, as we said, when they hold on to the ball, I'm not sure they've punted the ball yet tonight. They've uh, punted it once. One time, okay. Abney with the PAT. It is good, and Hillgrove has taken a 14 to nothing lead with just under two minutes to play in the half. Matt, everything goes to the left here if you're the Hillgrove Hawks on offense. We've seen Bolter touchdowns now go to the left side. Wilson looking that way for star receiver Richard Hallman. 
And there it is. Hallman, the big 6-4 target. That's just pitch and catch right there. He's wide open, finds a seam, in for the touchdown. That's your CSG touchdown replay. One more look at it. Nice job right there. You can see Jeremiah Bridges in the area, taking his defender with him to clear that space. And once Bridges crosses over, Hallman curls in, makes the catch, in for six. Six plays, 75 yards, took him just under three minutes to get down the field. And now a two touchdown lead for Hillgrove. Marietta down 14-7 last week against South Cobb at halftime, exploded for 30 third quarter points on the way to winning 44-28. They're going to have to have a similar third and fourth quarter here tonight, it looks like. Well, they got to get the ball into the hands of Benson, number 20. He's gotten some touches, but they got to really find a way to get him open. And you've got a minute 41 here to figure out some things on offense as we, again, very unique kicking approach by Abney. Short kick and a fumble for Marietta. And it looks like it was recovered by the Blue Devils. And Daniel Charles, who is a linebacker fielding that punt, was able to get on top of it. Again, the game plan is kick it anywhere but to number 20, Cravante Benson. So they're more than happy to give up the field position in order to keep the ball out of Benson's hands. You know, they're, they're up 14 nothings. We look at the touchdown one more time. And watch this from the other side of the field. Again, coming right at you right here. This is in the hands of Hallman. You can see 19 bridges go right by. That's a great play call uh, by your offensive coordinator and Coach Ironside for the touchdown for the Hillgrove Hawks. Quite frankly, the battle of the number twos is being won by Hillgrove. Matthew Wilson, a much more effective night quarterbacking so far than Brenton Martin. In fact, I think that was the first completion of the night right there for Martin on that pass to Keith Cooper. Yeah, one more look at it right here. Again, trying to get something going with a screenplay because right now nothing is going on in, in the, inside the trenches for Marietta. They can't get anything going, can't get the running game opened up, trying to get the ball outside. And that's not working either. Yeah. Wilson's been able to get the job done with his legs and with his arm. And Martin, quite simply, just not has not been able to get, get moving here, neither with his legs nor with his arm. Let's see if he can pick it up. Yeah, because the delay of a game here. When everybody in the building knows that Benson's getting the ball. Yeah. And Hillgrove does too. It's going to be hard for Benson to beat Hillgrove's 11 by himself. Yeah, I agree. Well, and Marietta's offense right now is really out of sync. That last series, they're all over the place. Fourth down, the, there's a guy who wasn't on the field. Just now, delay of game. Not sure what they're running. They're not on the same page. Benson gets the handoff. Hillgrove doing a good job there. That was Kaga again, the first guy to get there. Kalechi Kaga really doing a good job. We got him down for four tackles now here in this first half. Good look at Benson there, 44 yards down 11 carries. Time ticking down now. Marietta not in a hurry. He's the Atlanta Touchdown Club back of the week after his 320 performance against South Cobb. Heavy rush, another quarterback sack for Hillgrove. Josh Price drops in the third sack for that defensive line here in the first half. And that's going to be the final play of the half here, Matt. And that just kind of sums up what this first half has been for the Marietta offense. Martin drops back and has, there's all kinds of white shirts all around him. His line totally broke down. This, this defensive line has really controlled the tempo for Hillgrove and has given them a chance, despite those three fumbles, to take a 14-0 lead here into the half. Price with a sack, Moore with a sack, Elkins with a sack, with the row, with a pass breakup. That defensive line for Hillgrove really has controlled the line of scrimmage and whipped Marietta up front. That's been one of the big stories of the first 24 minutes as the teams head to the locker room, and Hillgrove has a 14-0 lead as we check in with John Nelson. Thank you, Matt, here with the coach. Speed to the corner got you the points. Uh, the backs are getting on the edge. They took them away early, and uh, Matthew picked up some yards inside. They played a little different. Uh, you know, we just need to cut up turnovers. I think we turned over three or four times. That's uh, not good, but kids are playing hard. And then flip side, you're keeping their running game in check, and that means that you're flipping the field on them. You are, but he's still punting it, and uh, 
mashing us down here every time. We're working, 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 and we give the ball back. But I uh, just need to keep doing the same thing in the second half. But, you know, he's one play away from taking it, so you just got to keep that lead. All right, thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Halftime show, Mark, starts right now. John Nelson, thank you very much. It's a pretty exciting first half. Yeah, we're standing in what was Hillgrove's end zone, and we saw a lot of them down here this evening so far. All right, coming up with the GPB Football Fridays in Georgia halftime show, we'll hear from the Marietta High School Marching Band as part of the Hall of Fame ceremonies tonight. We will also check out scores from games around the state. Grace Olson will check in with some proud parents and a social media. Georgia cotton farmers want you to know cotton is grown in 91 Georgia counties on over 1 million acres. Cotton makes a $2.5 billion economic impact and accounts for over 15,000 jobs in Georgia. Cotton's innovative production has lowered water use per pound of cotton by 75% since 1980. One bale of cotton can make 215 pairs of denim jeans or 700 towels. Cotton is a natural choice for Georgia. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren and I've got your back. What is by moonlight and empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. The new College Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts fans closer to the game experience. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of college football interactive exhibits. Tickets available at cfbhall.com. During this performance, one student will drop out of high school. Be there for your big finish. Let's go down to John Nelson, who's having a whole lot of fun. Is that John Nelson, the conductor? Yeah. I grew up in DeKalb County, so I knew all about the reputation. World-renowned, high-powered, high-octane, and to get the chance to conduct that band on Football Fridays in Georgia, are you kidding me? To be able to climb on that ladder and get them through a number in one piece, it's one of the coolest things I've ever got the chance to do here at GPB. I cannot wait to see what this season brings. Go on to GPB Sports Facebook page and let us know some of your favorite yeah. moments. Welcome back to French Johnson Field. We're at halftime of the Hillgrove Marietta game. Hillgrove leading this one by a couple of touchdowns to Matthew Wilson. Touchdown passes. The Hawks leading Marietta 14 to zip. I'm Mark Harmon. Beautiful night for a high school football game here in the state of Georgia. It is absolutely perfect weather. I'm Claire Sims. Thank you for staying with us during this halftime show. It is a very exciting night here at Northcutt Stadium. It is Marietta High School's Hall of Fame induction night. So they're going to be spending halftime welcoming some of their favorite best all-time players into their Hall of Fame. That's pretty cool. It's really pretty great. Uh, Athletic Director Paul Hall and I had a long talk about this. Five or six gentlemen going in, and it's just a great night for Marietta High School. Yeah, I got to look at some of their pictures lined up earlier. It's pretty cool. But we have a Hall of Famer in the house <laughs> tonight of our own. Let's check in with Grace Olson from the Social Media Hall of Fame. Grace? Far too sweet of you. Thank you, Claire. We saw that big touchdown at the end of the first half between wide receiver Richard Holman and quarterback Matt Price. And these guys, they knew how important big plays were going to be coming into tonight's game in the first game of region play for the season. And I talked to both of them at practice this week about how important that region play is. And you can find that interview, those interviews, online at gpb.org slash sports in an article I wrote and also on the Facebook page. So make sure to check that out so you can hear from the guys them themselves, those superstars now here, we've been talking about all the construction that's going to be going on here at Northcutt Stadium. And I've got a video for you right here. This is the, the oh, no, 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 
it's not loading the handy dandy uh, iPad that I've got right here. The technology that's supposed to be working, but right now it doesn't want to. But this is a video that was shared with us uh, by the school. Um, okay, well, it's not loading right now. It just does not want to load. But they it shows the, the whole plan, what the stadium's going to look like, all the renovations, and, uh, and it's a very well thought out uh, process that is being shown in this video right here, but clearly it's not working. So we're going to use social media to share that with you like we're sharing everything else. And hopefully the video will decide to load and the internet connection will work so we can show that to you later on in the game. So uh, check out social media to find it for now. Back over to you, Mark. Thanks, Grace. And Athletic Director Paul Hall will be back to talk about the renovations. $11 million worth coming up after the end of this football season. Now let's check in with John Nelson. He has the principal of Hillgrove High School standing by alongside Christian Settle. John? Thank you very much, Mark. Here with Christian. And he's a veteran of all these because for those of you who've seen us for a couple of years, he's dressed in red, white, and blue. He used to be over at Walton, and now he's in these colors. What's going on these at Hillgrove? These are great colors. I know. What's going yeah. on in those colors these days? Oh, a lot of great things. A lot of great things are going on over at Hillgrove. We're just really excited. Our band is in their brand new uniforms that they have this year, and our football's off to a good start this year. So we're just having a great year over at the Grove. All right. It is time for time to play. Are you smarter? Let's see if whether or not. Are you smarter? Yeah, Come he, on now. All here right, we here we, here's the question. It is, uh -huh. founded in Detroit, what luxury brand will relocate to a new headquarters in New York? Is it A, Gucci, mm -hmm. B, Cadillac, mm -hmm. C, Rolex, or D, Hulu Plus? I don't know. Who, these are like recent. This is like, hmm. It's like recent events and I stuff. I know. Hmm. This is like that new show, The Idiot Test, too. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> nervous here. Don't be nervous. I know. I'm going to go with uh, C. Rolex. Rolex. Oh, which one is it? It is, is it? B. Cadillac. Cadillac. Cadillac's oh, Detroit to... car. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you know, you're Come still on. a winner. You got a, you got a high and hearty handshake. I'll take that. Always, man. It's Good. always great to see you guys. And thanks for getting us on tonight. It's a great night over here in Marietta. Good to see you, Christian. Good to see you, too. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we'll send him back over to Mark. One down, one coming up. All uh, right. <laughs> John, thanks very much. Coming up on our GPB halftime show, we will have more from the Hall of Fame festivities here at the historic Northcutt Stadium. Plus, John Nelson's back with Back Roads and Backfield Story you won't want to miss. Yep. Grace Olson, she's going to talk to some very proud parents in our segment we call Rent Check, checking in with the rents. It's all ahead when Football Fridays in Georgia's halftime show continues right here on GPB. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren and I've got your back. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. Are you willing to give a helping hand? Enter GPB's video contest. You could win a cash prize and make a difference. How can you help stop the drop? Next time on Finding Your Roots, legendary athletes Derek Jeter, Billie Jean King, and Rebecca Lobo get into the game of genealogy. That's unbelievable to think that the Jeter name came from a slave owner. I don't know how many generations I've been here. I have no idea. I want to know when the galley got here. Did not know we had any Jewish ancestry. Wow. Finding Your Roots. Tuesday at 9 on GPB. Nature's three-part special presentation continues. From frozen ice to the scorching desert, baby penguins take their first steps. To capture every moment, spy cams pop up in the most curious places. Some undercover cameras are a welcome part of the penguin action. Others will ruffle a few feathers. 
on Why Wednesday at 8, only on GPB. Welcome back to Football Fridays and Georgia's Halftime Show. Live from French Johnson Field, historic Northcutt Stadium right now. The Hillgrove Hawks leading this one 14 to nothing at the half. It is Hall of Fame induction night here at Marietta High School's Northcutt Stadium, and the festivities are going on all behind us. So far, we have been able to stump one principal. Let's see if we can go two for two. John Nelson is standing by with Lee Colburn, the principal from Marietta. Thank you very much. It is time once again to catch up with what's going on at Marietta with first name Miss, second name Colburn. What's going on at Marietta these days? A lot's going on at Marietta these days. Um, right now I think the most pertinent story for us is probably the rebuilding of the stadium. Um, at the conclusion of this season we'll start rebuilding of course Northcutt Stadium. You've probably heard a good bit about that tonight. Um, but yeah, we've built a new auditorium about a year ago. We kicked off a great new arts program there. So we're, we're having a wonderful time. All right, it is that time. See if we can stump and go two for two. Let's see if we can go Are You Smarter? Once again, the question is, uh, during the Clinton Global Initiative, soft drink companies pledged to cut 20% of what from their beverages? Was it A, poison, which some people think might actually be in them, B, taste, C, calories, or D, sexiness? C. C. Calories, that is absolutely correct. So we have a lot of folks who are far smarter than I ever will be. Thanks for hanging out with us. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. All right, Mark, let's send it back over to you. Thank you, John. It is Hall of Fame night here at Northcutt Stadium, Marietta High School. Let's check in now with the Marietta High School Marching Band, brought to you by Regions Bank. Tonight's show theme and the Oscar goes too, and you can see the Marriott's dress there and the Golden Globes like the uh, Oscar itself. Well, here are the scores from around the state on the Georgia EMC scoreboard. Let's check out those scores. Lots of big games going on around the state tonight, and it is Grayson ranked number two in the state, leading Burkmar 21 0 in the second. North Gwinnett and Mill Creek no score early on. Decula leads Shiloh. It is Cambridge over Kell, 14 to 13 at the half. Marist leading Redan, 10 to nothing at the half. Elsewhere, it is Ringgold leading Calhoun by a field goal. GAC is leading big time over Best Academy. Hughes and Douglas County, no score in just yet. It is uh, Ware County, a big lead at the half. And uh, Effingham County battling with Coffee right now. Coffee leading at 21 to 19. For complete high school football scores, just go to the GPB store. It's free. You can download it. It's absolutely fantastic. You'll want to do it if it's free. It's everybody's. It is going to be an action-packed season right here on GPB Sports. And let's take a look at the season schedule brought to you by Georgia EMC. Next week, South Gwinnett at undefeated Grayson. They're having a great season. We'll see if they can keep that up. The following week, a huge game as McEachern tackles North Cobb. Then it is Milton at Walton. Then, October 24th, the two biggest schools in the state are going to collide with Collins Hill at Mill Creek, followed on a very spooky Halloween game, Tucker at Lovejoy, then Gainesville at Flowery Branch. Then it is the playoffs all the way to the state championship games in the Georgia Dome on December 12th and 13th. Remember, GPB is your home for high school sports. John Nelson returns for another edition of Back Roads and Backfields, brought to you by the Georgia Cotton Commission. The natural choice. For Georgia. What do you have for us tonight? The toughest region in the country, and I'm just going to go ahead and put it that way. You go down south, you go into 6A, you talk region one, and it is rough and tumble every single week. Here's your preview. 
It's that time. Pick your cliche, but after a bye week, Valdosta, Lowndes, Colquitt, Tift, and Camden welcome Lee County into one of the toughest tests you'll ever have. But what do the guys on the sidelines think about the 2014 version of Region 16A? Is it what we say it is? You know, the, the parity in this region from top to bottom is, is you know, absolutely crazy. It is. We're all about the same. And, uh, you know, so you get a lot of close football games. Uh, you know, there's not those, those weeks on your schedule where you can look down the road and say, if we can just get to that point and get to that game, then we'll be okay. You know, your kids have to be at their best each and every Friday night in this region. Lowndes is one of two schools in the last decade to win a state title, three and a four year stretch. But head coach Randy McPherson knows the past is the past. You know, everybody's got good players, everybody's got a good coaching staff, everybody's got great facilities. Um, uh, nobody's going to dominate this region for any, any length of time. You know, I think it's up for grabs this year as, as it will be any year. Camden is the other, and head coach Welton Coffey has learned lessons in the offseason. After a Week 12 bounce last year, he knows how nasty it can get. What everybody's always tough. It does not change. Valdosta returning about seven, eight guys on the defensive side of the ball. Coach Gillespie does a great job. Everybody knows what Cole Quit has. They're going to do an outstanding job. We get caught up in the whole pro show and everything. He's outstanding, man. I really enjoy being around him. And his teams are always prepared on Friday night, and that's what matters. Great quality football over there. And out of the expert to check on the sleepers. Tiff County, uh, they've made a lot of headway the last few years. I think John Reed's done a, an outstanding job. Lee County coming into the region, a lot of good kids, a lot of good South Georgia athletes, but I think there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for them when you have to jump in and coming from playing the region schedule they were playing to now having to play Cockwood, Lounge, Camden, Valdos. That's, that's a little bit different. And we will have a preview of the region champs Camden County in next week's edition of Backroads and Backfields, Mark. John, great job. Backroads and Backfields brought to you by the Georgia Cotton Commission. The natural choice for Georgia. Claire. All right, thanks, guys. Well, they are some of the loudest fans in the stands every single week, but it is time now to put them to the test. Let's check in with Grace Olson with a segment we call Rent Check. That's right, Claire. It is rent check. It's time to check in with one of the parents of the play, one of the players on the field tonight. This is Tootie Bernard, the mom of Nakia Bernard, running back for Marietta, and we're gonna play some trivia tonight. But before we do that, this wouldn't be a proper rent check without flashing up some embarrassing photos of Nakia when he was a little boy. He was playing football in one of them. He was a very tiny little boy. What was your favorite memory from when he was little? I would say when he was in kindergarten, he raised the most money, and it was principal for a date. And he was so excited, and he came home and gave me a hug, and the kids was like, Mom, thank you for helping me raise this money. I've never heard of something like that. That sounds really neat, like an awesome experience. Now, now we're playing trivia, so I'm going to start quizzing you, Mom, okay? What, okay, if he could step into the shoes of one NFL player, who would it be? Devin Hester. Right off the bat, she got that one. Oh, yes. <laughs> plays for the NFL, and, man, he's been making some big plays, so good choice right there. What is his favorite video, sports video game? Madden. Madden. Okay, mom's on top of it. And which classroom accomplishment is he most proud of? Mm, I would say British Lit. He said bringing his lit grade up. So, man, you are on top of it. You know your stuff. You know your little boy. Okay, well, thank you for joining us on Rincheck. And let's bring in one of those Football Fridays in Georgia t-shirts. Are you going to wear this one next week, Mom? I will. Thank you. All right, well, you enjoy it. Let's send it back over to Mark. Grace, thanks so much. We welcome now the athletic director of Marietta High School, Paul Hall. Thanks for coming on. Thank and you tell for us me. a little bit about, I mean, we've uh, already talked about the historic 75-year history here. Talk about what's coming up next in this great renovation. Well, we have some big things planned. Um, if I could start on the home side, we're going to take out most of this um, concrete bleachers and shift the field over, give us a little bit more sideline space. We're going to build back into the practice field, a new three-story press box, move our School board back to this side, have a new visitor's booth, and then totally redo the visitor side so that we have new bathrooms, concession stands, new entrances, so we can house the team on that whole side without them having to come to our side. So I like the sound of a three-story press box. That sounds good. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. Hey, talk a little bit about the fact that the field will remain grass, not artificial turf, and why. There's a great story behind that. Well, I mean, traditionally, this has always been grass, and um, right now, 
you know, all of Cobb County went to the turf, and we kind of like being different. We want to keep the grass, and, you know, there's a lot of people around this community that have, that have put some blood, sweat, and tears into this grass, and maybe even some ashes and some other things. I mean, it's, it's pretty historic and, and pretty sentimental, so we thought it was the right thing to do to keep the grass. It's hallowed ground here yeah. at Northcutt Stadium. Paul, thanks so much for all thank, your hospitality this week. Thank you so much. Good luck in the second half. Thanks for having us. All right, thanks very thank much. You. Over to you, Claire. Now it's time for our career play of the game brought to you by the Technical College System of Georgia. Not every career keeps you cooped up in an office. Fields like agriculture, wildlife management, and forestry are perfect for anyone who loves working outdoors. Agribusiness is the oldest industry in our state. It's still vital, but today's agricultural careers require training and skills. Forestry is another outdoor career that's moving into the 21st century. New harvesting techniques require professional training. Careers are waiting for anyone ready to get out and get to work. That's why working in the great outdoors is our career play of the game. This message is brought to you by the Technical College System of Georgia. For more information on getting your next career started, visit tcsg.edu. You ready for the second half? I think everybody's ready for the second half. This is going to be exciting. It'll be nice to see if Marietta is able to come out of that locker room energized. All right, Matt and Larry have the call right after this timeout. Stay with us. The new College Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts fans closer to the game experience. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of college football interactive exhibits. Tickets available at CFB all.com nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of georgia tcsg colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for with campuses across georgia state-of-the-art facilities and outstanding instructors with real world experience it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast track you into a rewarding career we're building a better future for you contact the tcsg college in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. You look twice before crossing. You exercise, you choose the salad occasionally, but when it comes to staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, going it alone is hard. So Cigna has your back and your knees 24 seven in sickness and in health. Answering your questions, giving you some coaching, helping you get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Signal. Welcome back, Northcutt Stadium, getting ready for the next 24 minutes. Marietta down 14 0 as we get ready to start the third quarter here with Coach Burton. And I guess, how would you characterize that first half? Missed opportunities? Soft. Okay. Um, football's not real, not real hard. It's three things it's playing fast, it's blocking, and tackling. And we're 0 for 3 in those three categories right now. We're not playing very fast. We're not blocking anybody. And we're not tackling too many folks either. It's uh, told our guys we're lucky that it's only 14 nothing right now. And those those four fumbles, I know offensively, you have, it's come in kind of fits and starts for you trying to get everything going from the running game. Yeah, it's been tough. Um, some of that's self-inflicted, though. So, you know, we can only control us. And Hillgrove's a good football team. But we've got to give ourselves a chance. Right now, we're not doing that. Right, good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, let's send it upstairs to Matt and Larry because rumor has it, I think you guys have some stuff from the first half. Yeah, and, and John, Larry, they, he hit the nail right on the head. Scott yeah. Burton, they are lucky to be down only two touchdowns with the way they played in that first half of play. Yeah, they really are. That defense, uh, those three, they don't force those three fumbles that they then recovered. This could be a, a 24 or 28 nothing game right now. I mean, that's how lopsided it's been. Uh, it was all Hillgrove in the first half. And Hillgrove offensively, their quarterback Matthew Wilson and running back Sonny Harris had big first halves. Let's take a look back at those first half highlights. Uh, early second quarter, Wilson goes to the air, runs the screen pass to Tavion Walker, and he puts on the Jets. Yeah, he does. Gr great speed. They try to run this play. They like to go to the left side. That was a 7 nothing, and then later they find uh, their big receiver right here. Uh, that's uh, very impressive as well, the touchdown right there to their big 6-4 uh, wide out. 14 nothing. that's how they got on the board. Yeah. Richard Holman with the touchdown catch right there. So two touchdown passes for Matthew Wilson in that first half. The other big story, of course, all the fumbles. And uh, Philip Ironside hit on that. They had three fumbles that they lost in that first half or else uh, their their lead could be up to three or four touchdowns right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, both coaches right now. A lot to talk about there at the halftime. The missed uh, communication there on the handoff. They wouldn't show there's going to be a handoff or a fake. 
Marietta recovers. And then just, again, some good opportunistic play by the Blue Devils defense. The strip right here, that forces a fumble. Smith jumps on it. Cameron jumps on it, actually. Smith is the one who, uh, who forced the fumble. And then here's another one, another big gain. First down, you're off and running. You're headed inside the 30, mm -hmm. and you cough it up again. Boy, just a three really tough plays if you're Hillgrove. And Hillgrove dominating the, uh, the yardage so far in this ball game. Yeah, 272 yards, I think, actually, is the total yards there to 47. But still, that is really impressive. And that just shows, again, 12 first downs to four, how they really have run the ball and all that they've done uh, and how much they've dominated this here in the first half. Marietta has a lot to do. And as I said before uh, the halftime, Matt, I really think for Marietta, especially on offense, just get it together, stop, get on the same page. A lot of looking around. Um, the quarterback uh, wasn't very happy there. A couple of plays went happy with this uh, Britt Martin with some of his teammates. Uh, they've got to come find a way and, and, and on top of everything else, get the ball in the hands of Cravante Bench and as much as possible. The 5'8", uh, 195 senior. He's a state sprint champion. You got to get the ball in his hands uh, to make it happen uh, if you're going to have a chance to get this victory here. And the third quarter kickoff is brought to you by GoBuildGeorgia.com. Learn a skill, build a career, do it now at BuildGeorgia.com. Kickoff is going to be taken by Benson at the 25-yard line. And Curvante Benson with a 19-yard return up to the 44-yard line, and that's why they've been trying to kick away from him all night. Well, smart play there by uh, Scott Bird. You see what he did right there. Again, they're kicking the ball away. From, from Benson, so what does he do? He just moved up into that spot to make sure he was the one to get the kickoff and a good return. So great field position here for Marietta. Let's see if they can block for Brenton Martin too. That was one of the big stories in that first half. Three quarterback sacks for that Hillgrove defensive line in the first quarter and second quarter. Yeah, Hillgrove really won the battle up front on both sides in the first half. Curvante Benson right up the middle, crashes across midfield. Kaga making the tackle for Hillgrove, but that's a pickup of about seven on the play for Curvante Benson, had 12 carries for 49 yards in the first half. And that was his best carry up the middle. Again, things bottled up inside between the tackles, not much going on. That's a big first play from scrimmage for Marietta. Second down and short. Blitz coming off the edge. Martin eludes it, but he's in trouble. Nowhere to go, and two comes back to get him. Cameron, two, was the guy who blitzed off the edge and then came back and made the tackle, his fourth tackle of the night. Well, I don't know if anybody noticed it, but there's a, watch it right here, the fake to number 20. Watch the lack of white shirts around 20. He is off and running. He could have been scoring six on that one. As the defense keyed in on Martin, they saw something. Great read by the Hillgrove defense uh, to stop him there for no game. Third down and four. Right up the middle, the blitz coming. Pass dropped off for Berniard and dropped in his tracks by Malik Shavery. Shavery making the tackle, and it's going to be fourth down. That was a great blitz coming by Kaga, so he rushed the play. Yeah, watch this. In fact, let's listen to this hit by Shavery. <laughs> strong pop right there. 5'9 <laughs> senior bringing it. Shannon on the punt. Standing at his 39. Man, he blasts that thing. Fair catch called for by Long, and he makes it at the nine yard line. Well, you know, we talk about the Marietta defense and those three forced turnovers. Let's give credit as well to Shannon and those booming punts. Yeah. The Auburn bound punter, as you said, ranked number two in the country right now among punting recruits. Uh, among high school seniors. Uh, he's, you know, when the Marietta offense has stalled, and it has stalled a number of times here already, he's forced Hillgrove into some not so optimistic field position to start their series. It was a 39 yard punt, but what's most impressive about it is the ball explodes off his foot. He gets such hang time. He gets college hang time. Most, you might get 39, kick, 39 yard kicks in high school, they're line drive kicks. He's got a college style punt. Matthew Wilson on the carry. Martel Sanders, the leading tackler in this game, makes his sixth stop as Wilson. Strong first half. Nine of 12 for 109, a couple of touchdowns in the air. Eight carries for 51 yards. 
offensively, he's really been the player of the game thus far. Harris trying to turn the corner. And Harris rumbles up to about the 18-yard line, dropped by Seward. Kyrie Seward making the tackle. Didn't, you know, if, if you just watch and say, well, that was just an okay play. This is a really great effort, though, by Harris. Watch him here as he goes all the way out, outruns that defensive pressure that had it strung out pretty good, still made positive yards, making a third and short for Hillgrove. Harris now approaching 100 yards. That's his 11th carry right there. He's now at 96. His partner, Eric Montgomery, only five carries for 23 tonight. Wilson again. Wilson picks up the first down. They have run that play a number of times with Wilson, that zone read play, and Wilson picking up the first down with it. And you can guarantee, again, just as we saw in the first half, they're going to run this, run this, run this, run this, and they look to screen the ball out left and see if they can pop somebody open for a big game. First and 10 from the 23. Wilson again. Matthew Wilson picks up about three yards on that play. Yeah, we, you know, we talked to Coach uh, earlier about uh, he's going to give the ball to Harris and Montgomery, Montgomery and Harris, but you're right. Wilson's really done a great job running this offense, keeping the ball moving, positive yards every time. He's got a strong quarterback legacy in Phillip Ironside's eight years as the head coach. They've had four different quarterbacks. Three of them have been all state. Montgomery on the run. And that's Sanders pushing him out of the pile. Kendrick Knight, number 11, also there, the sophomore on that defensive line. Third and long now. Marietta's defense has to step up. Their offense has yet to do anything here in this game. Philip Ironside, the head coach, now in his ninth season. 13th season overall. He was four years at Campbell and Smyrna before taking the Hillgrove job. Looks like a halfback pass. Montgomery up top, and it's broken up. Nice play by Raymond Lester, the corner, to get his hand in there and break up that pass that would have been a big gainer to Trey Blunt. And a holding call on this play. One more look at it. You see here. Yeah, they might have gotten a hold. Yeah, against Marietta, and that's what that's what the call is going to be. It's going to be a first down for Hillgrove. They got. I think it was Raymond Lester, number five, the senior. Yeah, he held on the pass play. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep up with Sonny Harris. Tough break for Marietta. Matthew Wilson again. Martel Sanders on the tackle. But a lot of yards for Hillgrove on that play all night tonight. Matthew Wilson following in the footsteps of Elijah Ironstein, All-State quarterback. John Silas, Sinjin Days now at Georgia Tech also. All-State quarterbacks in this Hillgrove program. Matthew Wilson breaking into the open, finally corralled at the 29-yard line by Cameron, by Karan Cameron. 27-yard pickup. You know, right now you're looking at this fast-tempo offense, and that's what created that right there. Marietta wasn't set yet, and here Hillgrove again, the fast-tempo. Coach Ironside wanted to run. Eric Montgomery, Martel Sanders on that tackle again. Sanders now with eight tackles, but he's about the only guy making contact right now. This is what Hillgrove wanted to do, keep the ball moving, force this young Marietta defense to have to stop and think about what's going on. Wilson this time. Sanders and Seward again on that tackle. And it's going to be third down. Getting up a lot of clock at the same time. Now, already under six minutes to go here in the third quarter. First possession for Hillgrove in this third quarter. Blitz was coming. Pass complete to Long, and Bingo Long has a first down. Fourth catch of the night for Bingo Long, who had seven in their first four games and four here tonight, and that's for a first down. 
Yeah, just impressive job. And again, very quickly to the line. This is right what Hillgrove wants to do. Harris goes over 100 yards with that carry right there. And Harris into the end zone for the touchdown. But a flag is out. Trying to see here, that could have been holding on Hillgrove. No penalty oh, on Marietta, Marietta, and that's going to be a 16-yard touchdown run for Sonny Harris. Fourth touchdown run of the season for Harris as he goes over 100 yards on the night on our TCSG replay. Yeah, just he's just too quick. Again, we talked about these two running backs right here. Once he found the seam on the outside, good blocking as well. Touchdown, Hillbrook. So a long time consuming drive by the Hillgrove Hawks capped on the 16 yard run by Sonny Harris and Hillgrove in command 21 to nothing. This moment getting here took three years of sleepless nights and postponed vacations. Your dad said play it safe. Your husband kept the faith. But franchising is why you partnered with Regions in the first place. We share your vision for moving forward. And at moments like this, I see. that makes all the difference. Is your business at a turning point? Regions. More important than doing business is being in the business of doing. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives care about more than providing a utility. By partnering with local organizations, we allocate tools that improve the quality of life in our communities so that every bright idea is displayed, every heart kept ticking, and every young mind educated. Meeting needs, creating possibilities, making a difference. Georgia's EMCs, committed to our communities, lighting the way. An impressive 11 play, 91 yard drive that took over four minutes, Larry, and Hillgrove in command, leading Marietta 21 to nothing. This 29 yard run by Matthew Wilson really got it jump started. Yeah, he really did. And coach talked about just how he said he's a smart player, getting smarter all the time. Wilson, just a junior, you mentioned first year as a starter, and then you hand off to one of your big guns in the backfield, Sonny Harris, just way too fast out there in the secondary. Boy, I tell you, when he gets an open field, he's got a motor, doesn't he? Harris now 12 <laughs> carries for 112 yards and a touchdown. Matthew Wilson, 14 carries for 88 yards. As you take a look at the details on the scoring drive, and Hillgrove close to having two 100-yard rushers tonight, but it isn't Montgomery and Harris. It's Harris and Wilson. And who would have thought that? A whopping 16 to four advantage in first downs also for Hillgrove. Hillgrove's been very impressive. Again, you take away the three fumbles, this, this could already, <laughs> the score could be much, much worse. Marietta offense has got to find something. I think what, four or five uh, first downs is all we have so far in this game for them. Benson has it kicked by him and out of bounds, so the penalty flag dropped on the play. So Marietta will take the ball at the 35. Or they have the option of making them kick again if they'd like. Looks like they'll take it at the 35. You know, the Blue Devils have really struggled here on offense. Again, they're huddling up here. Last instructions before they go out. Let's see what they can put something together. Very few first downs. Very they, little momentum. They barely have over 50 yards of offense in this game. Yeah. And all of it pretty much from Benson. 53 yards of total offense in this game, and most of it running by Benson, who gets the handoff, and there's no place to go for Benson. With the row is there. Grant Elkins is there. The entire defensive line that has just physically whipped Marietta's offensive front allowing Benson no running room. Well, this is what you talked about at the end of the first half when it was 14-0, and again, Hillgrove in control. Now you're at the problem where You've got to get find some kind of yardage, and everyone knows that Benson's your star guy to figure something out uh, and to try to get some get some yards. If you can't make that happen, because Hillgrove's going to focus on you. Yeah, and they haven't been able to block in the passing game yeah. for Brenton Martin to set up and throw. Three quarterback sacks 
allowed by the offensive line, and they've all come from the defensive line. This isn't blitz. This is just defensive linemen whipping offensive linemen. Berniard on the carry might be their longest run of the night right there as Berniard gets nine right up the middle. You know, it's pretty close, and I thought that was smart to at least uh, send Benson in motion to the left out in the flat to kind of, again, shift the focus out that way. One more look at it. As you can see here, Benson's already moved. Good hole in the middle. They haven't had many of those to run through for the Blue Devils. Brings up a third and two. That was their longest run from scrimmage wow. tonight. Third down and a short two. Bunch formation, everybody in the box, and they get the first down on the carry by Martin. Just their fifth first down, and it took them 32 minutes to get it. Wow. I think Hillgrove had five in their first two possessions. <laughs> and it felt like five in that last drive alone, 91 yards. Fresh set of downs here for Marietta. Now he's got some time to throw. Now the pocket breaks down. He's being traced, chased by Elkins. Grant Elkins, who already has one quarterback sack tonight, ran him to the sideline, and Martin had to dump it off. That well, was good coverage downfield by the Hillgrove secondary. Again, they're without Eric Jackson. We mentioned at the top of our broadcast tonight, the defensive leader. He's the guy who calls all the shots, calls all the plays in the backfield, tearing his Achilles, running sprints after practice. He's out for the year. Certainly the injury bug has, uh, has really, has really hurt, and, uh, has hurt Hillgrove this season. That was LeBron Mitchell, the wide receivers coach, calling in the plays from the Marietta sideline. Back at his alma mater, of course, a standout wide receiver at the University of Georgia. That's Jordan Dukes. And a first down or close to it. LeBron Mitchell trying to get his offense going there. That was the first positive yards pass reception and completion for Marietta. They're now three for nine for nine yards in the game passing. In fact, LeBron Mitchell is one of four former Marietta Blue Devils that have come back to coach at their alma mater. Benson didn't get it. Mm. They needed one yard and the Hillgrove defense denied them, led by Ryan Moore. One more look at it. Watch the surge here by this uh, defensive line for the Hillgrove Hawks. Left him nowhere to go. He brought everyone in. Great play right there to shut him down and force a fourth down. Close to two minutes here in the third quarter. Fourth and one. They got to go for it. Down three scores. Trying to pull him offside. Brenton Martin, quarterback keeper. Second surge, I think, got him the first down. They might have to measure for it, though. Yeah, he got a good surge. He got, got a pretty good spot there. And yeah, it's first down, no measurement. Got a pass to 44. That was close. Martin is one of three players, only three players on the offensive side of the ball with any experience coming into the season. Benson and the left tackle, Brian Marshall, the other. Looks like he got some uh, help from behind there. Got a, got a nice shove when things got clogged up. First and 10 for Marietta. Fresh set of downs again. Benson coming to the near side. And Benson finally dragged down from behind by two and another first down. So Marietta's offense for the first time tonight showing some signs of life. That's a 13-yard game. Yeah, I like that Benson finally got up. But again, nothing inside. He goes outside. Look at him here. Gets, takes advantage of his blocking. He gets a few extra yards. Hillgrove defense in pursuit on that one. But nice effort there by Benson. Dukes, catch. Elkins runs him out of bounds. But a nice gainer there for Marietta starting to get the motor running. Yeah, try to open things up here just a little bit. Again, they're coming so hard up the middle. So try to get the ball outside, do something here. It's, it's a tough play. Jalen Phelps running right by the play right there. <laughs> Otherwise, he had it covered pretty well. Second down and five. Ball's dropped. That's a big mistake. That's tough. And then big... he gets dropped by Max Murphy. Yeah, big momentum killer, Matt. 
Moving the ball, moving the ball, positive yards for the first time all game, and then one more look at this. Just took his eye off the ball. Yep. Nothing wrong with the snap. Third down and seven now. Benson running far side, and a nice hit by Josh Price to slow him down long enough for Kaga to come in there and finish him off, and now it's fourth down. Yeah, great Hillgrove. We've said it so many times. Great defensive effort. Again, just stringing him out, getting good penetration in the line. Watch him here. There's 38, and they just follow the play, follow the play. As you said, Price slows him down, and Kaga right there to make the stop. Fourth down and six. They got to go for it here. Empty backfield. Final half minute of the third quarter. Benson in motion. Martin in trouble. Martin gets away from Murphy. Keeps it alive and throws it deep. And it's dropped inside the 10-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Keith Cooper, that was tough. Boy, he was wide open. He had to come back for the ball. Let's take a little look at this and see. He was actually he was open for quite a while as again. Uh, good defensive effort here. They couldn't, they couldn't rack, wrap him up. Uh, Brent Martin goes deep, has come back for the ball, and just couldn't hold on to it. He actually was closer to the end zone. As you can see here, the ball was underthrown. Running back toward it. Oh, that's tough. And Hillgrove back on offense for the final play of the third quarter. And Matthew Wilson up to the 34. Well, that might be the one that Marietta had to have to get back in the ball game. It was their best drive all night by far. And fortunately for uh, Mr. Keith Cooper, that's one you're going to think about for a while. That's tough. Tough break. 36 minutes done at Northcutt Stadium. Hillgrove Hawks going for their fourth win in five tries against Cross County rival Marietta. As we head to the fourth, Hawks on top, 21-0. Today, companies in the aerospace, advanced manufacturing, and film industries need skilled workers, and the earning potential is high. Go Build Georgia can show you where the jobs are and what skills you need to get them. And the Technical College System of Georgia has fast, affordable training for these great paying careers. Build your blueprint for success at GoBuildGeorgia.com and look to the Technical College System of Georgia to put your plan into action. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren, and I've got your back. The new College Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts fans closer to the game experience. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of college football interactive exhibits. Tickets available at cfbhall.com. Right now I'm about 100 feet high, traveling at about 50 miles an hour, just thinking about where I should go next. Do you have any ideas? Visit us on our Georgia Traveler Facebook page. Gotta go! This is 88.5 FM, Atlanta's new source for your news and information. Good morning. Let's start the conversation. What's on your mind, Atlanta? We want to hear from you. The news and information you've been looking for is here on 88.5. From Peachtree City to Piedmont Park, from Norcross to Decatur, GPB Atlanta is the source for stories from your community. 
All news, all information, all day. and chilly night here at historic Northcutt Stadium. The Hillgrove Hawks currently meeting, leading Marietta 21 to nothing, heading into the fourth quarter. Now, we asked you guys earlier on in the game which former Marietta place kicker kicked for the 1980 National Championship Georgia Bulldogs squad. The winner for tonight is Jason Rump. The answer, Rex Robinson. He kicked here at Marietta and is now in the Marietta Hall of Fame. He went on to play in the NFL and, and have a very uh, fabulous career in the NFL and he's still very well remembered here with the Marietta Blue Devils. Back to you guys up in the booth. Yeah, Rex Robinson, the kicker for Georgia's 1980 National Championship team, and Scott Sisson, a Marietta Blue Devils alum, the kicker for Georgia Tech's National Championship <laughs> team in 1990. In fact, hit one of the biggest field goals in Georgia Tech history when in 1990 on the way to their national championship. They beat, at the time, number one Virginia on national television on Sisson's last second field goal. So a great history of kickers here. Uh, Hap Hines, of course, went on and, and, and actually coached here. He was a kicker at Georgia as well. And now Ian Shannon, the latest in the long legacy of kickers out of Marietta, and he is committed to Auburn. Right up the middle, Eric Montgomery on the first carry of the fourth quarter, up close to the 50, as Hillgrove trying to apply the knockout punch here to Marietta early in this final period. Yeah, we've talked about, again, the play up front for both the sides of the line for Hillgrove, and again, the offense just creating some huge holes there. First down and a quick snap again for Hillgrove. 347 yards of total offense to Marietta's 91 through three quarters of play. 231 to 77 the advantage on the ground and 116 to 14 the advantage in the air. Hillgrove has dominated and it actually could be worse for Marietta had it not been for three costly turnovers for the Hawks uh, in the first half. Costly not in that it looks like it's going to cost them the game but costly and it cost them points. Yeah, absolutely. Right up the middle, Matthew Wilson. First down carry from Matthew Wilson. He goes over, I believe, 100 yards on the night, or at least close to it. Yeah, one thing about Wilson. He's close to it, not, not quite there. Coach Ironside was saying that he's got to, you know, he doesn't dwell on old mistakes. You know, good runner, good leader, good worker. And fights for the first down. Might be at 100 right there. If they give him three, that's 100 yards rushing for Wilson tonight. Hillgrove, Timmy mentioned two and two, but coach was saying, you know, they really lose, they learn more from the two losses than the, than the two wins. And that's, uh, you, you, you hear that a lot in the first month of, of any season. You know, you got to learn as you go along, especially if you have some new team, some new players on your team, new chemistry you got to work on. I think the lessons were well learned. They look pretty good tonight. Harris finally put on the ground by Devon Henderson, the cornerback, but not until Harris has the first down. Sonny Harris, big strong night for Sonny Harris tonight. He's their leading rusher, picked up 11 right there. Harris, long time ago, over 100 yards. He's at 123 on 13 carries. Quarterback Wilson at 99. Harris goes to the bench and Montgomery checks in. Montgomery gets the rock. Down to about the 26-yard line. And they're running there along the left side. Keep in mind that early in this game, and the right tackle, Hayes Barber, went down with an injury. And we have not seen him back yet. So, again, the injury issues that uh, Hillgrove has had, uh, the reserves have come in and played very well in this game. Yeah, Hillgrove has... Played a tough schedule to open the season. Beat Lasseter and Shiloh, then lost to North Gwinnett 28-21. Lost to Lovejoy on a last-second field goal 27-24. Wilson scrambling. Runs by Knight. Knocked out of bounds by Martel Sanders as you take a look at Hillgrove's schedule. Next Friday night, they'll play North Cobb with a chance to avenge their only regular season loss from the 2013 season. They finished 11-2 and reached the quarterfinals last year for the second time in school history. Their big rivalry game at the end of the season at home against McEachern. We'll see McEachern and North Cobb coming up in the weeks ahead here on GPB. 
As you notice right now, the Hawks in no hurry at all. We saw up-tempo, 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 very fast snaps in that drive in the third quarter. Total opposite right now. That's Montgomery. You're a tough combination. Montgomery going out. Harris coming back in. Harris again a bit quicker, shiftier. Montgomery still fast, but more of a power back. It's a tough combination for a defense to keep up with. You mentioned that uh, Hayes Barber went down with that leg injury earlier. That's Bridges inside the 10-yard line. Looks like it's number 58, Robert Braz, a junior who has been playing that right tackle position. Flag out. Illegal, Illegal shift. shift. Twelve-yard pickoff and uh, pick up rather negated by the illegal shift penalty, and it'll be fourth down. Get that penalty there in the first half. You may recall. I think it was the weren't quite sure what it was. We couldn't find it on the replay. It was actually the receiver ran out of bounds on that play. Fourth down. They'll go for it. Your kicker doesn't have a range out to this. Pressure coming up the middle. Want to do a throwback pass, trying to get the ball back to Wilson. Sonny Harris was trying to throw it back to the quarterback, Matthew Wilson. And the ball is going to go over on downs on the incompletion. Well, we got a flag they threw. They may try to call possibly some pass interference here to see what the call is. Wilson, the quarterback turn receiver. And yeah, it's going to be against the Marietta defense. One of the call. So a first down for Hillgrove at the 13-yard line. Yeah, let's watch this one more time here, Matt. And here's the play again. It's the, the quarterback, Wilson, going out. Now watch this. And yeah, the ball's by him. Really, it's, I'm not sure it's a catchable ball. But the flag comes out. Hillgrove catches a break. Sonny Harris inside the 10-yard line. And... Martel Sanders again in on that tackle. Sanders has to be close to double digits and tackles tonight. <laughs> Good looking kid, sophomore. Yep. You know, not as big as Ty Tomlin, who signed at the University of North Carolina. Just a great linebacker. Montgomery inside the five and down to the two. That'll be a first and goal to go coming up for the Hawks as they are about to put this one away in law likelihood with another touchdown. Montgomery takes it in. 27 to nothing. Montgomery getting into the end zone for the fourth time this season. Impressive drive right there, again, helped by the questionable flag there in fourth down that went against the Marietta defense with the TCSG touchdown replay. You can see here Montgomery reaching Pater for the first time. His backfield running mate, Harris, got in in the third quarter, and now Montgomery gets him and himself and Hillgrove both on the board. PAT is blocked, so the score will remain 27-0. Hillgrove, 7-14 away from winning their Region 4 6A opener as Montgomery crashes in. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren, and I've got your back. 
Georgia cotton farmers want you to know cotton is grown in 91 Georgia counties on over 1 million acres. Cotton makes a $2.5 billion economic impact and accounts for over 15,000 jobs in Georgia. Cotton's innovative production has lowered water use per pound of cotton by 75% since 1980. One bale of cotton can make 215 pairs of denim jeans or 700 towels. Cotton is a natural choice for Georgia. Welcome back, Northcutt Stadium, 7.14 to go, fourth quarter, 27-0. Hillgrove right now shutting out Marietta. Give you some scores from around the state, and probably the biggest surprise is the up-and-coming program at Cambridge. Right now, Cambridge hanging in there with Kell. Right now it is 22-21, Kell in a back-and-forth game. That game is in the third quarter. Other games on the board, and a reminder that when we have the post-game show, we'll have up-to-date scores and let you know what, what else is going on around the state. ECI leading Savannah Country Day. That one's 14-7. That is also in the second quarter. Another big game up in North Georgia between Cartersville and Gilmer. Gilmer having one of their best starts in a long time, but right now they're trailing it home to Cartersville, 31-14, third quarter. Back upstairs, we'll have more stuff as we go along. And remember, the post-game show is just around the corner, guys. Can't wait. John, thanks for that. You see behind uh, quarterback uh, Matthew Wilson there and walking. That is Rachel Palazzo. She is a four-year manager on this Hillgrove team. We point her out because Coach Philip Ironside says she will kick a PAT for this team before the end of the season. She's a member of the soccer team. She's been a dedicated, loyal manager for this program for four years. She practices her kicking every day in practice, and he has promised her here in her senior season, she's going to get a chance to kick a PAT in a game. Palazzo, last name Palazzo? Palazzo, Rachel Palazzo. Is Benson returns at about 12 or 13 yards. And let's check in with Grace Olson down on the side. All right, and this is the very jersey that Rachel be, will be wearing when she heads out to the field to maybe kick that uh, field goal attempt one day. I talked to her last night, and she said that one day during a Thursday walkthrough, the kicker wasn't there. So naturally, being a soccer player of 14 years, coach had her step in. He said, hey, you know, she most of her attempts were successful. He said, you want to be the first girl kicker on this football team? And he said, I'll give you a chance one day. So she's ready. She's got her jersey ready, but she's on the sideline right now. Back up to you guys in the booth. All right, thank you, Grace, and with the help of John. She's uh, interested in sports medicine. That's the, the career she hopes to, uh, you know, pursue. So she's been helping out, and, uh, you know, as a manager and trainer slash trainer on this Hillgrove team for the last four years. So first and ten, Marietta in a deep hole now, down four touchdowns. Here comes a heavy rush, and Brenton Martin is dropped for a big loss by Sam Griffith. And that is the fourth sack of the night for the Hawks. Yeah, big night for this uh, Hillgrove defense. One more look at it right here. Again, Martin trying to make something happen. You got a pass now, but look at the white shirts all around him. Never got a chance to really set his feet and even look downfield. Um, this Hillgrove line on both sides has been incredibly impressive all night. Second sack of the night for Griffith, who entered the game with 32 total tackles on the season. Second down and 19 now. Ball is dropped. Martin has to pick it up, run for his life. Looks like we got a holding on the play. That was right in front of everybody. Dukes makes a nice grab over on the far sideline. Going to go for not though. One of the offensive linemen getting beaten badly on the play was holding. Tough night for the Blue Devils. Nothing's really gone right for them outside of, again, the three force fumbles in the early in the first half. Good look there at Scott Burton. Trying to reach the playoffs for the fourth time in five years here at Marietta High. They're going to start in an 0-1 hole in Region 4. Yeah, the hold's going to be evident to everybody as you watch the replay. Yeah, watch your right side of your screen here. Martin with the... Uh, uh, the bad there snap, but there it is right there. It's, yeah. <laughs> There's the flag. It was right right in front of him. Jerome Botang was holding Spencer Metcalf, but he had to or his quarterback was about to get crushed. Right up the middle. Benson on the run. Kaga on the tackle. 
Kaga and Tubin making a lot of tackles for Hillgrove tonight. And now it's going to be third down and long. Benson, no running room. Benson came into the game averaging 170 yards per game. But tonight, Benson has 73 on 18 carries, and that really almost accounts for probably about 80% of their total offense. Yeah, they've had really outside of the runs he's had, and, and he has not broken very many of them, Matt, as you know. And we've got a timeout now. Uh, Marietta's offense has really been struggling and just not in sync. They're not, not on the same page. 5.45 to play. Hill Grove way out in front here on Football Friday in Georgia on GPB. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, go you. And viewers like you, thank you. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. What is by moonlight an empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. During this performance, one student will drop out of high school. Be there for your big finish. Twenty-seven, nothing. Hillgrove on top of Marietta. All night we've been talking about the guys who are going to college. Well, here's a look at the group of guys that are already there for Hillgrove. List includes the brothers Bradley and Brandon Chubb at NC State and Wake Forest. Evan Ingram, fine tight end at Ole Miss. Tolando Cleveland at Mississippi State. The great running back Kenyon Drake at Alabama. And the Days brothers, Jabari Hunt Days and Sinjin Days at Georgia Tech. And for Marietta, the starting quarterback at LSU, Anthony Jennings. They've got New Mexico State tomorrow night. Ty Tomlin, the linebacker at North Carolina. And Tyree Harris, the wide receiver at Wake Forest. Scott Burton, the head coach, his team about to be 2-3 and three on the season, 0-1 oh in the region. Third down and 30 to go. 403 to 86, the whopping disparity in total yards tonight. Heavy rush. Kaga chasing. Martin jumps and throws and intercepted back at the 44 yard line by Jalen Phelps. Second pick of the season for Phelps. Well, again, that was created again back at the line. Just a great push, the surge, chasing after Martin. He had nowhere to go, trying to make something happen. Desperate play, third and very long, and the interception. One more look at it here. Watch Martin again. Look at that right there. A Benson makes a, a block, but not good enough. Didn't matter, though. There's four white shirts right there all around him. Two different guys were <laughs> lined up ready to make that. B.J. Bobby thought he was going to make the pick until Phelps sailed in, and he makes the interception. Bryson Parks is now in there at quarterback for Hillgrove, and he'll keep it and run. And Bryson Parks runs it across the 40-yard line. Parks, their backup, a 5'9", 155-pound sophomore, 76 yards rushing on the season, 21 yards passing. Actually came in when Matthew Wilson got hurt against North Gwinnett a couple of weeks ago and led the Hawks on two fourth-quarter touchdown drives as they rallied 
from a 21 or 28 to 7 deficit and cut it at 28 21 but couldn't make it all the way back. Harris turns the corner. Watch out. Harris down to the 15 yard line. Tell you what, that's a dangerous play. And as you watch that play develop, they've run that again about 12 times here tonight. They run it a lot and they keep running it, keep running it, keep running it. Pretty soon they have uh, some uh, success with it. They, the receiver that's out there will, will push the defender actually to the sideline. He runs to the sideline, feels like he's pushing him into it, and then he cuts it back inside. Watch this right here. Goes out to the sideline, and every time he cuts right back in around the block by his receiver. Very, very smart play. They, they've drawn up, and they run it very well here for Hillbrook. 15 carries, 155. Parks touchdown pass. Richard Hallman with his second touchdown reception of the night, and it is 33 to nothing. And for Parks, his third touchdown pass of the season. This kid's a sophomore backup, really? That he's was sharp. He showed a lot of poise right there. Impressive. Bring in some of the reserves and you don't miss a beat. Now he's going to hold on the kick. 34 to nothing. Bryson Parks, you mentioned a sophomore, and there he is. What a nice night for him, the TCSG touchdown replay. Watch this. Just the great poise right here. The fake. Lose the defender, and guys all around him. He's only 5'9. Perfect strike. Of course, uh, Richard Hallman is 6'4. It's an easy target to throw to, but still. Very nice play. Doesn't lose his poise. Nice toss. Touchdown. Nice play there by Brandon Parks. Three plays, 46 yards. The touchdown pass of 15 yards from Parks to Hallman. 34 to nothing. As you mentioned, we open region play tonight. Big, big win for Hillgrove. Marietta's got their work to do, no doubt about it. After taking a thumping here at home by Hillgrove. Young team, and that was one of the fears of Scott Burton. We talked about it in the All Access Pass pregame show that uh, the team that played fast and physical was going to be the team that won the game. And Coach Burton was afraid that his team might not be able to do that because of their youth. Benson. And Gervonta Benson up to the 39 yard line. And the reason being that he's got such a young team, they got to stop and think about things rather than just reacting and playing as we check in with John Nelson down on the sideline. Thank you very much, Matt. Check in with more scores from around the state. Some action in 6A. Grayson beating Burkmar, no real surprise. 36-6, that's in the third quarter. Also on the board, a big matchup down south. Cairo beating Ware County, uh, Way, uh, being Worth County, 29-6. That is a fourth quarter score. Carrollton gets, in, gets a Duke tonight. 39-0 shutout over Banneker. Also on the board, the Kell and Cambridge game that we're keeping an eye on. Kell still 22-21. That's a third quarter score. It says a lot about the program that Cambridge and what they built in only their third season. You can get all the scores. If you have an iPhone, you can get the app. It's free. Get all the scores. Keep up to date. If you have an Android, go to gpb.org. Go to our website. Be sure to bookmark it and make sure that you have all the information you need and get all the scores and highlights and schedules of anything humanly possible. As I'd like to thank my model, Grace Olson here, yeah, now it's your turn to model. There's your scores, those all the schedules, all that kind of stuff. Get it for free. And that's, that's a mere sampling of what you can get. Post-game show around the corner where we'll have more news and stuff from around the state, have a bunch of scores. And it's a cast of thousands back upstairs. And as the Hall of Fame pitcher Don Sutton famously taught me back early in my career, if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> First down carry right there for Cervante Benson. <laughs> wise words exactly <laughs> Word, words to live by and that's I've tried right. to my entire life that's right <laughs> Marietta back to the line of scrimmage under three and a half minutes to play now Benson another first down carry for Benson as he gets down to the 30 yard line well, I like that Marietta's not throwing in the towel trying to get a score here Benson a couple of uh, carries ago when John was uh, talking about uh, the scores and you can go to the GPB Sports app. It's a great tool, by the way, to follow all the scores. 
Uh, great effort there to get a first down on that first run from scrimmage in this series. Benson now up over 100 yards on the night. That's his 22nd carry right there. So Benson just a shadow of the performance he had last week against South Cobb when he went for 320. The week before he went for 210 against Noonan. A strong effort here tonight, but uh, just not enough Curvante Benson or not enough Curvante Benson's on the field for Marietta, perhaps we should say. Force fumble there. Marietta lucky that it bounces out of bounds We're under the three minute mark. And Matt, you know, I, I with this, I think again, if you're and there's Benson coming out of the game. Like you mentioned, 106 on 22 carries. If you're Marietta after this game, uh, you take this and, boy, just starting tomorrow, you begin to work toward the, there's nothing you can do. It's a loss on, on paper. You take the things that, that you can teach from this and move forward. Uh, there's just there's there's nothing <laughs> nothing good you can take from this performance tonight, unfortunately. Sean Plummer. Sean Plummer being worked on down on that Hillgrove sideline there. Looks like they're looking at his... Uh, left leg. On October 1st, GPB premieres a brand new documentary interview program, First Family from Plains, marking President Carter's 90th birthday and hosted by Judy Woodruff. Don't miss this intimate and eye opening inside look at the life of the Carters coming Wednesday, October 1st at 7 o'clock. Can't wait to see that. I watched, the, I watched every minute of the Roosevelt's last week. Great, great stuff. Great, great Ken Burns series. Oh, yeah. We got nothing done, and I loved it. It was great. Plummer didn't want to be helped off the field. He hobbled off the field. Marietta. Road gets no easier next week. Berniard right up the middle, down to the 15-yard line. First down carry for Marietta. They'll be at McEachern. While North Cobb will be hosting, or rather Hillgrove will be hosting North Cobb, looking to avenge their only loss from last season. We'll be at Grayson for South Gwinnett at the Grayson Rams. Look like the Grayson Rams going to stay undefeated tonight. Nikki Kahn's program bouncing back after a down season last year, and of course, that followed in the uh, shadow of the, the Kimdichi years there in Grayson where they won the state championship that uh, Robert Kendici in his junior season. To the air, intercepted at the goal line. Second pick of the night for the Hillgrove Hawks, Marcus Banks with the pick. And the ball goes over to Hillgrove, and it looks like the Hawks are going to get the shutout. On Hillgrove's defense, pitching, pitching a shutout. Great play right here. Stepping up, ball was underthrown just a bit. That allows for the interception right there. As we mentioned, Marietta on the road at McEachern next Friday night. And then North Cobb visits after a bye week on the road at North Paulding. First and 10 for Hillgrove from the 20. Kennesaw Mountain and Harrison close out the schedule for the Blue Devils in the tough Region 4 6A. They drop down a game. Remember, the top four teams in each region qualify for the state playoffs. Top two teams get home field advantage in the first round. Top team guaranteed home field advantage at least the first two rounds. And if you're the three and four teams out of the region, you're going to play on the road. And you're going to play on the road at uh, a South Georgia location. They'll be hooked up with uh, Region 3. If I'm not mistaken, in the first round of the playoffs. Not much doing on that carry right there by Javon Hickson. Well, Coach Ironside mentioned there was a good look at him going to three and two now. Said again that they learned more in their two losses than their two wins. But I think they learned a lot about themselves tonight. A big challenge. Competition steps up as you enter region play. They really answer the bell on both sides. Great play on both sides of the line. Uh, great efforts uh, on defense. Their offense moved the ball well. A lot of points on the board. Even despite the injuries. Javon Hickson. 
Runs out of bounds at the 31 yard line, stopping the clock with 49 seconds. Picked up the first down. Look at what Hill Grove has done. No losing records in their eight seasons, and now three and two, trying to make that nine for nine since the school opened back in 2006. Yeah, they won the Region 4 5A championship in 2011. Last year, 11 and two, beat Alcove and Camden County in the playoffs before losing to eventual state finalist North Gwinnett in the quarterfinals. They've had one undefeated regular season, three double-digit win seasons. Twice they've reached 11 wins. Well, the Byronside says the culture at Hill Grove is all about winning. Players, coaches, parents all committed to it in every sport there at Hill Grove, winning tradition. Final play perhaps of the game right here. Pass completion to the 42 yard line. Joseph Williams making his first catch of the season as the clock ticks under 10 minutes to play. 10 seconds to play I should say. And that will do it. Impressive victory for Philip Ironside and the Hill Grove Hawks as they blanket Marietta 34 to nothing here at Northcutt Stadium. Hawks now three and two. Ironside now with his 64th win against just 25 losses at the Powder Springs School. And Larry, an impressive performance this evening. But first, let's check in with John Nelson. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Matt. Here with the head coach, dominating performance tonight. You seem to put the pedal down in the second half. Thought the kids played well. We talked about coming out, setting the tone, start the second half, and we got to three and out, and then we went and scored, and I think it did kind of set it. Uh, Boat our neck. They were getting ready to make it uh, score, and uh, we stopped them on downs there when it was 21 to nothing. It was kind of over at that point. And it seems like everyone, I guess let's ask the question, where do you think everyone is right now? Is the offense getting toward full song, or where, where are you th right now, do you think? I don't know. I, I, like I say, they're playing, playing hard. Quarterback's playing smarter. He's getting better each week. We lost another lineman to probably a broke ankle again tonight. That's about the third one in three weeks. So we just have to keep finding kids, keep working and doing them. And I think the kids are playing really hard, really good. All right, congratulations on the win. I know you'll celebrate for about 15 seconds. Yeah, thank y'all. All right, let's send it over to Mark. Post game show starts right now. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, well, first of all, we'll wrap it up up here. How about the performance here tonight? Harris 155 on the ground, Wilson 98 on the ground, also 116 in the air, and a defense that came up with four sacks and two interceptions. Yeah, I thought it was really impressive. Those running backs were as advertised. They looked really good. Harris and Montgomery, uh, as you said, the, the defense too. And I think one of the things we pointed out in, in the All Access uh, pregame show, Matt, was talking about uh, the tempo. And that was something Hillgrove really set the tempo. Again, 34 points on the board. That's despite the three fumbles they forced in the first half that it could have been much, much uh, worse. Dominating performance for Hillgrove, and what a way to start region play for the Hawks. Absolutely. 1-0 in the region. Marietta starts in the hole. 34-0 the final. Larry, we'll see you at Grayson next Friday night. Now down to Mark and Claire.